and then we're going to do our uh, top five most anticipated. Ampis- <laughs> 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 anticipated. I've never done that before. Anticipated is so That's fantastic. funny. That's great. <laughs> do you want to play a game? What's your favorite scary movie? Be afraid. Be very afraid. You're going to need a bigger boat. Here's Johnny. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. Whatever you do, don't fall. Welcome to Talking Horror with Jamie and Nikisha. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jamie. And I'm Nikisha, and this is Talking Horror with Jamie. And Nikisha. Where we share our love for spooky things and talk horror through the lens of human behavior. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> All of the above. You know why? <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. Yay. Happy New Year. We made it through another crazy, chaotic year as millennials in this economy, <laughs> giving you all the horror and having a good old fanciful Living time. The horror. Living the horror. You are correct, Jamie. <laughs> but hopefully giving you guys some laughs along the way. So to commemorate this happiest of happiest new year today, we are going through our top horror movies of the 2023 year. We're going to give you our top tens. We're going to give you disappointing ones, honorable mentions, most anticipated for 2024. It's going to be a great episode guys. So Mm -hmm. give a listen, put yourself down, see if, any of your movies made our top 10 list. And as we continue on, I know Brian is going to guide us through our little chatty chat today. Cause you know, Brian loves some rules. So he has some rules as we go through (laughs) our um, (laughs) movies for today. Um, So you can, just before we get into all the rules, there's a lot to do today. So I just wanted to give a straight up spoiler alert. We're going to be talking about a lot of movies from 2023, and I just don't know what we're going to spoil and what we're not going to spoil. For um, sure. So just beware that we may let you know the ending to The Outwaters. I don't know. So <laughs> there's 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 stuff alert. like that. Alert, alert. So there's stuff like that. Um, the second thing is, if you wanted to hear more about the movies that we saw this year, there's a couple places that you can also go. Obviously, you can find this on YouTube. Hi, YouTube! Hey. Uh, if you're not already Hello. there. You can also find us at Talk Horror Pod on social media, on Instagram, of course, on Twitter, and then on TikTok. We'll be putting a lot of our lists there as well, so you can see us talk about that. You can see about some of the reviews that we did. But another place to find us is also on Letterboxd. On Letterboxd, you can see full lists, all of that random stuff where we're really tracking what we're watching. You can follow myself or Jamie. Uh, that is in the description of this episode. That's where you can find like all of our feelings, you know, and, and we'll track what we're seeing. So um, super excited to get into it all today. So this yes. is one of my favorite episodes to do. Um, I like Nikisha. I watched a shit ton of horror movies in the past week like i filled in all the holes um jamie yeah. and i like plowed through a lot of the ones that like we probably should have seen this year that we didn't um and now we've seen them and we can add them to our lists um nikisha did you watch a ton of them this week yeah i did so even with my show schedule any free time that i had i'm like mm, let me uh pop in a horror movie or two and what i based it on well i obviously asked brian and jamie what they suggested that um i should watch but i was looking at the rotten tomatoes top horror movies of the year oh, and going based off of that and spoiler for that, I will no longer be trusting Rotten Tomatoes. For- <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> I have a whole conspiracy theory that Rotten Tomatoes is just paying, that critics are just getting paid off and you can't They have to be. It. There is a movie called Murder Anyone that got 100% <laughs> on Rotten well, Tomatoes. And so I tried, I tried 
but it is a stage play apparently that got adapted into a movie and it's about these writers who are trying to write a horror play and mm. I, I don't understand why it got 100 even people in the comments of Rotten Tomatoes were like this is crazy so all that to say Jamie I think your conspiracy is <laughs> correct mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Brian it actually might be a movie that you might be interested in um but yeah murder anyone yeah, I know. murder anyone? You're like, I mm -hmm. hated it, but Brian, you may you might love it. <laughs> you I mean, Brian. it's very niche. Like it is for a specific audience and you are a Broadway and stage person and you know, I thought that I would like it for those reasons and I did not. So, you know, I would love to just hear if you got through the movie. That's really all. <laughs> It's called Murder Anyone. It's literally called Murder Anyone, and you like say it with that right. That's inflection. but that's Murder the vibe. Anyone? That's the tone. Murder Anyone. anyone? <laughs> okay, I'm adding it to my watch list now. It has Fantastic. a. It has a. I don't think enough people have watched it or rated it for it to have an actual average. The, yeah. Oh my wow. gosh, the most liked <laughs> review of this just <laughs> says. No, period. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll give I'll give this a whirl for sure. Love it, cool, please. Cool, cool. All right. Yeah, but yeah, we fit now. I will say this, and I'm putting this out there for the 2024 gods and goddesses that uh, I will reach at least 30 new movies for 2024. I was trying to reach it this year, and I couldn't. I got to 27. So oh, it's that's very pretty close. good. All right, yes, but I my goal. My only New Year's resolution for this year uh, is to survive it long enough to watch thirty new horror movies. So I think that's a good one. We're gonna we're gonna get it done. How many? So Brian, where did you land as far as how many movies you watched for this year? Fifty five. Fifty five. I watched fifty. So I'm on Letterbox, so I have all my stats. Um, I ended up watching fifty five horror movies. That's fantastic. Ended up I ended up watching uh, 55 horror movies. I ended up watching 70 something new releases in 2023 total, which Amazing. honestly I was a little disappointed in. I, I I wish I had seen more new releases. There's still a lot of stuff on my lists that I, I would like to see. Um, but um, including rewatches, I watched 204 movies in 2023. Um, I did 161 reviews. Um, that's 375 ish hours. Um, wow. I averaged 17 movies a month and almost four movies a week. Um, horror w was 117 movies. Um, mm -hmm. Thrillers were 80 of those. 47 of those were comedies. 44 were mystery films. Obviously, they share genres. Like a lot of these are yes. overlapping and stuff like that. But yeah. I ended up seeing 200 and I logged 204 movies um, on Letterboxd. And of those, here I can see this, of those, 126 were rewatches or older movies. Or let me rephrase that. 126 of them were non-2023 movies. Yeah. And 78 I watched were 2023 releases. Mm. Um, wow. Uh Although 146 of the movies I saw this year were first time watches. Um, That's so, amazing. Yeah. Oh, and it also shows me the movies I didn't review. Anyway, do you know who my number one actor of the year was? Meaning he appeared in the most movies that I had seen. Who? Tom Cruise. <laughs> oh, wow. Because we binged the Mission Impossible movies. Got it. Okay, okay, okay. Because I was like, yeah. I don't think he put out a lot this year no. but also we watched all the mission impossible movies and i watched edge of tomorrow this year i rewatched mm. that <laughs> um yeah and then a did lot you of... actually watch that or did it come up on tiktok and you were like no i'll just keep watching the rest of these clips um i watched <laughs> no no it, i it was on tv and i i stopped mm. and i ended up watching mm. it or something like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, just checking no, no, it's nah. a great question. That's a great question. <laughs> uh, Ving Rhames was on there because of the Mission Impossible. John Reese davies was on there because of we binged the Lord of the Rings and Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Patrick Wilson, who we'll probably talk about here in his beautiful singing voice, um, 
was in five of the movies this year, which which is like cheating because he's in the three Insidious movies that we watched. Um, he's in the Nun and the Nun Two, but like for like a second, you know wow. what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, if I for sure. anyway. Um, yeah, Letterbox is super cool. We are not sponsored by Letterbox, but I would love to be. Um, I just like that I get my stats and all that stuff. But yeah, That's to cool, answer though. your question, Nikisha, 55 horror movies released in 2023. Wow. Also, random side note, but uh, what's his name? Ving Rames? Yeah. I only know him because of a Bob's Burgers episode. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because Gene is talking about something... Um, and he's just saying, yeah, this thing is in most Bibles, at least in the Ving Rhames version. And his dad's like, you mean King James? Version? <laughs> um, uh, I was like, the, oh, OK. <laughs> the only thing I'll say is there's there's like uh, I, I believe that if I had seen a couple of other movies, I did just didn't get in at the end of the year. I think mm. my list would have changed a little bit. Like I did not. The one movie I really wanted to see this year that I just didn't get a chance to um, was Godzilla minus one, mm. and mm-hmm. I think that that would have been top five for me based on what I've heard about it and knowing what I like. Um, right. But once once I see it, once Jamie and I go and see it, like I'll I'll, I'll fill you in. Um, Please but, let uh, us know. Yeah. Let the people know. You know, uh, Brian loves a creature feature, guys. So. Mm. Of course, it's going to be uh, on the top. So, Jamie, how about you? <clears throat> how many movies did you uh, reel in for this year? I was just double checking because I, I think I might have been behind in some logging action because I kid you not, like literally the credits are rolling and Brian is opening up Letterbox to add his <laughs> review. And yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, I can wait till I get home. And then I don't. So Brian's probably, you know, better at this, <laughs> even though I'm making fun of him. Um, so I, I made a list just so I could actually track how many of the 2023 horror movies that I've seen. And I believe that I saw, if it comes up, oh no, it stopped working. I think it's a 23. Nice. Yes. 23 horror movies that my leather box froze. So it heard That's me great. talking badly. About <laughs> yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I saw in total, I saw 106 movies this year. Wow. Um, but I don't know which ones are like 2023 specific. Sure. I'm assuming that most of the new films I saw were horror um, mm-hmm. because I see all the movies with Brian. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. like oh, all 20, the superhero 24, movies 2023 saw. horror. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Um, and then at the end of the year, I made a list of all the horror movies I wanted to see or like get try to get in under the wire. And then mm-hmm. I gave the list to Jamie and I said, bold the ones that you want me to wait and like watch with you. Oh, and we did it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we love that. So, got, in, yeah. I got, got in a couple at the end yeah. of last week. Yeah, that's great. Listen, we all reached the 20 mark, which is like pretty fantastic. Yeah. I mean, us like, adulting and getting these new releases in you know have ourselves on the back and i also think just to like we did not cover new movies during the strikes right so that also brought like all of our numbers collectively down because we would have probably covered like i don't know if you saw it nikisha but like we would have covered the nun too and we would Mm, have covered mm -hmm. like some of that new stuff that may have fallen off your list because we we didn't have to see it right well and then (laughs) revisiting it uh, I did not watch it, but because of some of the reviews I saw, I was like, there's some other things I'm going to Yeah, yeah, like prioritize. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, But, so I want to jump right into this. The, what we're mm-hmm. going to start, so we're going to do a couple things on today's episode. We're going to do honorable mentions, the movies that did not make our top 10, but we wanted to give a shout out to. Doesn't mean it's 11, 12, and 13. It's just movies we wanted to give a shout out to. Then we're going to do our top 10 of the year, and we're going to do it the same way we do it every year. But once we get to it, I'll explain how we're going to run through those. Then we're going to do our most disappointing horror movies of the year. Not the bottom five, but five most disappointing movies. Mm -hmm. Um, Then we're going to do our um, uh, predictions uh, uh, for the year, along with miscellaneous categories for this year that we've done. And then we're going to do our uh, top five most (laughs) ampicitated. Anticipated. 
I've never that's done that before. Amputated is so that's funny. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Our most anticipated movies yes. of 2024. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll do that. Um, and then, and then I have a fun thing at the end of the episode, every movie that we've covered this year, I filtered our four S's and I see what we all gave tens and nines. So I want to talk through, like, if you still feel that way about them. Um, I'm excited for that. (laughs) And then I have lined up our, uh, our predictions and our anticipated movies from last year to see Mm -hmm. a, how you felt about those movies and B um, if any of our uh, any of our predictions came true, um, yeah. so let's let's get started with our honorable mentions. Um, Nikisha, let's start yeah. with you. Um, give us what with like th- your three honorable mentions, or however you prepare. How many you prepared? Okay, I prepared six because I realized <laughs> that. First off, I will I will give this uh, kind of preface. So how I arranged my top 10 was did I have a fun time watching this is it a good addition to the horror canon like with jump scares and gore intention building and Uh then would I watch this again and or recommend it to someone and this year for me was like a lot of kind of average above average movies which is why I have a lot of honorable mentions yeah that's so fair Yes. So with that, my honorable mentions are VHS 85, okay. Cobweb, um, okay. Renfield, mm-hmm. Infinity Pool, mm-hmm. Cocaine Bear. Hmm. <laughs> the gore okay. was fantastic. I'm so not a, a creature person, but in the plot made zero sense. But yeah. when that bear was attacking people, I was in it to win it. And it was a good majority of the film. So yeah. yes. And then I, the last movie that I uh, watched in preparation for this was It Lives Inside. And Me I thought, too. That, oh, yeah. I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed my time. There was uh, some things that I, I wish could have like pushed it a little further. Same. But for the most part, I thought it was a solid, a solid watch. Yeah. I thought that It Lives Inside was, I watched it this morning. Mm, um, mm-hmm. Uh, Cause it's now on Hulu. Yes. Um, I thought that it lives inside for me landed too heavy handed. I love a good mm. allegory movie. Yeah. I think that it let some of the horror go and was more about tension and allegory. And like, it was very heavy handed. I got it. I could have used a little bit more gore and horror of horror in it. Um, yes. <clears throat> But I, I, I liked it, but I, I, that, that kind of, because I got it, like I got what they were trying to say, like I was just waiting for this horror of it all. Um, but the creature design was awesome. Yeah. I really enjoyed the creature design and yeah. I thought that seeing too much of it would kind of take me out of it a little bit, but I saw, I still felt that it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So those are my, um, honorable, uh, mentions. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, before, uh, Jamie, what are yours? Um, I only have three. Were you going to say something before I read my list? Oh, no, I want to wait till all of us go through them first. Oh, okay. Um, so I also have Renfield on this yeah. list. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I also have It's a Wonderful Knife. Mm. Okay. And I have The Blackening. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Excellent. That's good. Um, yeah, those are all really, really good ones. Um, I, man, there were like you said, Nikisha. Like there are a lot of like better than average horror movies this year yes. that I would like suggest to people, but w- are not all timers. Yes, yeah, I agree. That was like the scope of the of the that yeah. and and a, and a lot of stuff about children. It's like, what were y'all thinking? Oh, man. Because there's so much just about, like, kids. And Uh I'm like, what's happening? And maybe, oh, yeah. I would argue that this year, and maybe, I don't know, but but there are so many movies about that, that, that really try and break down the female psyche of having kids in pregnancy. Yeah. A ton. Like, like, I can, like, um... 
Husera Bone Woman, yep. Megan, mm-hmm. just about becoming a mom, like but like not you know um birth Birthing rebirth. Birth. Yeah. There's something wrong um, with the children. There's something right? wrong with the children. Mother May I. Um God. like uh the offering. Um, when evil lurks. When evil kids. yeah, definitely. I mean, there's just like a ton of that type of thematic <laughs> um that I would say thematically a lot of movies dealt with that specifically. And I actually find that fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like, we'll get why into do you that. think that is? Or I guess Shouldn't that be the question for you? <laughs> right. <laughs> My only thought is just like the, because I don't really know who's making all of these movies, but it makes me right. curious about like generationally, are these movies being made by millennials and like are millennials mm. at this age now where like just, you know, because of how old we are, like these are the, these are the things that people our age are thinking about is like starting yeah. a family and like the stress about starting a family. And if people are ready, a lot of people are child free our age. So like, I think a lot of these things are really poignant for our generation as millennials. But again, like, sure. I don't actually know who is making, I haven't done any research into like, are all of these writers and directors also yeah. millennials? But that, that's, but that's like a great point. Shooting, you know, a shot in the dark one thought that yeah. I have about why. No, that's fascinating. I'm 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 very into that. that theory. Um mm. um so my honorable mentions are uh Hell House Origins, the Carmichael mm. Manor. Mm-hmm. Just a nice return to form um to the Hell House uh series. Um Brooklyn 45. Um ah. Really, really loved that movie. It just got pushed out of my top 10, but I definitely wanted to give it a huge shout out. It's more of like a, it's a post-war PTSD exploration. It takes place in one room, um, post-World War II, I should say, 45, um, with supernatural elements. Really, really dug that a lot. Um, The Offering, um, I saw that, I watched that twice this year. I really mm. uh, just totally surprised me. It's not perfect by any means, not perfect, but like totally dug that. Um, then I had uh, Mother May I, which I've mentioned a couple times. Um, that just fell, I think that was my number 11. That just fell out of my, um, the number 12. That just fell out of my top 10. I just thought that movie was awesome. I'm still thinking about that movie and that ending. Um mm. Uh, so I would, I really enjoyed that one. Again, that, uh, for those of you who don't know, that one is about this couple who inherits um, the boyfriend's mother's house or their fiance, um, their house. Um, and then uh, basically like he had a lot of issues with his mother. Um, and then the wife, you're not basically the most, the, this movie, you're not sure if the wife is being possessed by the mother or if she's like putting on this to like, like influence him and manipulate him. It's, it's a fascinating film with Kyle Gallner. Um, mm. And then at number one, I have a uh, Blumhouse direct to digital movies, um, mm. which there's something wrong with the children and unseen two movies that I watched that didn't go into theaters and just thought were really good. And usually when something's directed digital, I'm just like, eh, it's going to be fine. I know a lot of people thought they were just fine, those two movies, but I really enjoyed them. And thematically, I think there's something wrong with the children was doing something absolutely fascinating that I just had not seen in a horror movie. Whether or not you think they executed it well or not, I thought it was absolutely fascinating. That's and fair. that really kept my attention as well as how it was filmed and the soundtrack and how that was being used. Um, so those are my yeah. honorable mentions. Yeah, it was very 80s. Uh, yeah. Oh, you watched it? I did. Mm-hmm. Oh, Yeah. Um, it was very 80s. I kind of liked that it was trying to do that, like especially with the music over the yes. opening credits and, and end credits and stuff like that. Um, and I thought the way it ends, maybe not satisfying for some people, but I thought thematically it was very satisfying. I guess, yeah, for her as... Oh, I, okay, I get that. I get that. Because I was, like, I also was not satisfied at the end. Okay, because to me, spoiler alert for there's something wrong with the children. Mm-hmm. The the whole time during that movie, they're talking about like she doesn't want to have kids, right. and her 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 husband or fiance, I forget, wants to Zach Guilford, and and basically it's it's like thematically it's dealing with the fact that 
that society wants women to have children and it's built into how we function and all of that. And as people keep falling to these kids, like literally the kids keep could, the, taking over, they literally possess the adults and take them over. So all the adults are falling to me, symbolic of the fact that like first the parents of the kids fall, then the, the mm. boy, the, the fiance who's like yes. unsure falls. And then, you know, and then, and then she's like the, the final, girl if you will she thinks Mm -hmm. she gets rid of them and escapes from them and as she's driving um the fiance and the two kids come out of the woods and she like can't escape them so to me that was thematically like like this woman does not have autonomy because her her lover her partner the society her friends everyone is telling her that she has to do this thing that she's quote built for that is her purpose and Mm -hmm. And I thought the fact that she like just couldn't escape it and it will always never be escapable because that is what society dictates was, was very effective to me. Yeah, I get that. That storyline makes sense. I just think that I didn't get the through line of that because they were so focused on the fiance and like his mental illnesses sure. and the kids were attacking him. Sure. So when it then became about her that's when i was like oh well how i i see the connection but it's like how do we get here because there wasn't anything that detailed getting to the ending things that you're talking about yeah yeah yeah. but Um, as far as the concept i was like oh this is i agree brian it's a really good concept of a movie and something that seemed very fresh um especially with the pool of movies and remakes and sequels that we have been getting yeah. i was like oh this is a very it's a very um unique concept yeah mm-hmm. cool yeah. and then unseen i really i also really liked nice. um great so those are our honorable <laughs> mentions i am very very excited <laughs> to dig into our top 10 yes. so this is how the top 10 works um we're all going to like say our number 10 and if somebody has that movie ranked higher than you, we are going to wait until the last person who has it on their list, th- that movie is, is said, and then we'll all talk about that movie specifically. If somebody has a movie that no one else has, then that's when we'll talk about that movie and so on and so forth. So the idea is, is that by the time we get to everyone's number one, um, You know, we'll see how much it lines up. And, you know, once we hit everyone's number one, we'll be talking about that movie when it's at that number one slot. Um, Mm -hmm. I know that was a little convoluted, but I hope that that um, I hope that that is okay. It makes sense. We're going to do it. It'll be great. All right. So we're going to go Jamie, Nikisha, Brian. Um, That's me. Um, (laughs) And I'll keep tally of like if if we're going to talk about them or whatnot. Um, but, uh, let's get started with our top 10 horror movies of 2023. I'm very excited for this. Uh, Jamie, what's in your number 10 slot? Okay. So I've rearranged things up into just the moments before. (laughs) I'm obsessed. Uh, But I think, I think we're, we're green lighting this version of the list. So in my number 10 slot, I have... And then hopefully I also got all the years right. Um, in my number ten slot, I have the movie Sick. Mm, that definitely okay. came out this year. It did. Mm-hmm. It did. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, Nikisha, is that on your list? No, it's not on my list either. So Jamie, <laughs> talk about Sick. Um, I, I mean, okay, so it's by. Uh, our our OG scream writer and I know what you did last summer mm-hmm. writer Kevin Williamson mm-hmm. um so definitely has some of his like slasher vibes um yeah. it is about the pandemic uh which I know I think that's probably a big deterrent for a lot of people it's just like not wanting to be reminded that like this is a real experience that we have and like understandable that for being sure. said I I I really enjoyed um, like the idea behind it and just like ramping up this, the, like for those who haven't seen it, it's about, uh, you know, a, a group of people who, um, sequester themselves during the pandemic when we were all required to isolate. Um, and they all go away to like someone's parents lake house or something. And, um, 
they, they start to be attacked. Um, and ultimately, again, this, there are spoilers in this episode, but uh, ultimately you find out that our protagonist um, had, accident- had unknowingly, uh, ma- like she knowingly made out with someone, unknowingly had COVID. And mm-hmm. as a result, um, this person that she had made out with died and her and the the person's family decided to get revenge by like you know slashing and dashing her and all her friends um and i just i i just thought it was a really interesting like not only like fun slasher but like clever revenge plot Mm -hmm. um and uh yeah i just thought that was a really it was a good time and i like almost when i was like thinking really hard about my list I had almost forgotten about it because it just feels like it came out like a hundred years ago. Everything right. that I saw in like the first quarter of 2023 feels like it came out like in 2022 or 2021. So I was yep. like very nervous that I messed up my list. It just feels so long ago. But um, yeah. but I did I, – I thought this was like a pretty solid – and it came out pretty early in the year. But that was a pretty solid entry to like start off 2023. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we have a whole episode on it. Which I we forgot because I put it on we my list to watch episode. and forgot that we covered it. <laughs> um, there you go. Yeah. Um, I also, it was number 31 on my list. Mm. Um, however, I really, really thought that the end and Jane, Jane Adams' performance um, as the, the kind of the mother character was mm-hmm. excellent. Um, mm. And I really liked the concept that they're killing everybody in the um what's it called the people how you pass it the um oh, everyone the, the pod or the bu- the bubble everyone in their bubble um mm. who had passed it along like the the chain of people um uh your contact tra- oh she killed everybody th- through contact tracing oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, and i just thought that was really clever i thought that it really did a good job of showing the desperation of people and losing loved ones and not being able to say goodbye to them in the hospital so yeah mm-hmm. I, I i i think that was a that's an excellent choice yeah thank you thank oh, excuse you. me that was a sick choice hey sick nasty bruh <laughs> <laughs> fantastical <laughs> Nikisha, what's your number 10? Oh, God. Okay. My number 10 is When Evil Lurks. Yay. All right. That's on my list. Okay. So, Jamie, is it on your list? <coughs> it's not because I didn't see it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, my number 10 uh, is Influencer. Not on my list. It's not, not on this list. list. It's on another list, but not this oh, one. Oh, really? <gasps> really and i can't wait to talk about well anyway keep talk about it talk about it i loved this movie i thought the performances were great i thought that um i thought that the slow burn of it all was really enjoyable for me um i thought that the nefariousness of everything against the backdrop of thailand was really interesting Mm -hmm. i thought that how they integrated social media and technology to me didn't feel like a boomer or a gen x like writing in technology it felt like a fabric of the plot without being a distraction and i feel like it is a very very hard thing to do where it really felt like a fabric of that world and not like well like this is hip instagram's hip let me write a movie about instagram like for sure um like i said i thought the performances were great um i thought that um i just had a really excellent time watching it um even though i thought it was a bit predictable um especially mm-hmm. towards the end um i was still very into it so influencer was my uh, uh number uh 10 movie uh on uh on my list yeah can i say one thing about that yeah the movie <laughs> <laughs> okay the first 23 minutes in is right before we get the then we get the title card right yeah and i loved that the and i loved like loved beyond loved the first 23 minutes of this movie Mm -hmm. i thought that it was a genius concept i thought that the twist when you get like as you're getting to it and realizing like what's really about to happen in this movie i was like this is fantastic this will definitely be on my top 10 list 
And then as the movie went along, I just really did not enjoy the performance of the boyfriend. Oh. Mm -hmm. And that took me completely out of it because I just thought that like, I hate to talk, speak on anyone's like acting methods, but it just wasn't my favorite. Yeah. And totally. Uh, and so then that coupled with, of course, like Brian said, it was predictable. Like you knew what was going to happen at the end, but I wanted there to be a bigger to do at the end on the Island. Mm, Um, okay. And I feel like they just kind of swiped that away and then the movie was over. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I totally, totally get that. And also to your point, Nikisha, Mm -hmm. I thought I knew what this movie was about. I yeah. really did. And then at like 26 minutes or whatever it is, when the title card comes up, I'm like, oh, what's the rest of this movie now? Yes. Because I thought that the whole movie was going to be that first 26 minutes. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, and then, but I totally get the whole boyfriend acting thing. I 100% get that. Um, totally. And I think because I had such high, like, oh, this is going to be so good that mm-hmm. because everything else fell flat, then it just like fell off my list. Totally but fair. But I absolutely was rooting so hard for this movie because it was, I mean, that those first 23 minutes, fantastic, man. Yeah. Loved it, loved it, loved it. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, Jamie, we're on our number nines. Jamie, what's your number nine? Yes. My number nine is Hell House LLC origins the carmichael mansion manor yeah manor it's such a long <laughs> title i just wrote yes. hell house origins in my thing because i was like uh. why is why is this have like five different titles um despite the many titles um i i love this chain well um, nikki just is this on your list i didn't watch it Mm-mm. okay oh, okay it's not on my I, I, great it's, Sorry, I just yeah. dove. It right was your in. honorable no, mention, yeah. It, yeah, it was number mm-hmm. sixteen on my list. So yeah, mm. sorry, I just wanted to make Barry sure. Just made the cut. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> but uh, I, I love this chain. Um, and while the third Hell House LLC movie is not good, um, no. and like you really think that the that the chain is done because like they they really oh, they really dookied the sheets, as I say. They um, dookied the sheets. Uh, this, this prequel is really fun and, um, definitely brings back some really good creepery, some scare, some good scares, Mm -hmm. um, a lot of tension building like the first one. Um, they definitely are like bringing a lot of like expanding this world a lot more, um, and you know, at some points I was like, do we really need this? But I, I do like this world and I'm like interested in it. And I'm glad that at least now we're left with something way, way better than what we were left with before. So it makes mm. me more excited about like, you know, what's to come with the future sure. of, of this, uh, this limited, uh, uh, what's LLC stand for? <laughs> Oh, liability. Limited liability corporation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a sole proprietor, so I don't know what any of those. <laughs> no, are. that's right. <laughs> sole proprietor. <laughs> I am not. I'm, I'm not incorporated. <laughs> yeah. I should be, um, but I'm not. <laughs> cool. So Hell House LLC uh, origins the Carmichael Manor. It was, yeah, a lot of good return to forms mm-hmm. uh, from certain franchises and chains mm-hmm. this year, for sure. Um, yeah. Nikisha, what was your number nine? My number nine was The Blackening, which I know was Ooh. Jamie's honorable mention. So mm-hmm. is it even on your list, Brian? <laughs> 14. It's not in my top 10. Mm-hmm. It's okay. number 14. So go for I it. I think it's because I had such a good time in the movie theater watching mm-hmm. this. I watched it with some of my castmates as like a birthday thing and uh, just solely also because of the idea of it all, of just putting black people more in the forefront of horror, but also um, making it uh, like uh, reminiscent of scary movie with the Wayans, you Mm -hmm. know, like, and so I think that it's nice to have kind of this new wave of like horror black comedy in the mm-hmm. world so um i had a, i had a really good time watching it and yeah that was my number nine 
I have that on one of my other lists when I get to it. Okay. But um, <laughs> um uh, you know they announced a sequel. No way. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're I, getting I the blackening too. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully they learn some things and can tweak some yeah. stuff. But we'll see how but that goes. I'm definitely into that, and I, 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 I hope that that ends up being like a franchise that doesn't like nose dive like scary movie did you know for sure like yes Mm -hmm. um yeah um but my number nine is when evil lurks oh okay so uh it's not on jamie's list right you didn't see it right so yeah let's talk when evil lurks we haven't done an episode on this i mentioned it you know in other episodes that i watched it so nikisha Mm -hmm. let's talk about it wow okay so this was like everyone's top top whatever whatever's and so i had a lot of expectation for this the reason why i put it at number 10 was because i feel like this movie gave the it gives the award for the dumbest decision ever made in a horror movie ever i will say because the ending it's like literally this woman said don't do this he does it and then now everything is like fucked up and it's just like mm-hmm. we're at the end we're towards the end of the movie you're supposed to have learned the lesson believe all the things trust the people that are trying to help you and it didn't happen but the reason why it's on my list is because i will never forget that axe scene ever oof, ever in life well i i would argue that there are two scenes in this movie that i'll never forget the axe scene mm-hmm. and the dog kid oh wow <laughs> And when I say I, I told one of my friends I was watching this and his dad is like super into horror. So my friend was like, oh, yeah, I heard that it's like really crazy on like the kid stuff. There's a lot of kid stuff that ha- gruesome stuff that happens. Yeah. So I, I was anticipating it, but it still got me of how just they nose dived into just yeah. gore and the disturbia of it all. Like it was that and then the car scene too that happens like shortly yeah. after mm-hmm. that it i mean as far as disturbing the most disturbing um movies that i don't need to ever watch again because it was disturbing like i will give that award to when evil arts <laughs> yeah. how do you feel about it um i really liked it so similarly i think it's one of the more unique concepts of a horror movie i've seen in a long time mm-hmm. the idea that it's like a exorcism like society, I, 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 and I needed more rules. I needed more. Th- there were rules in the. Let me rephrase that. I didn't need more rules, because the rules made sense that yeah. they set those seven rules. What I needed is more context. Was this yes. just in this area? Was this a worldwide thing? It felt like very weird if it was a worldwide thing. Hopefully, if we get a sequel or a prequel. We'll get a little bit of that information if, if that ever mm-hmm. happens. So that that was one thing. So, because I was very, it took me a second to get into the movie because I was trying to figure out what was actually happening. Right. Um, so there was that. I think some of the sequences are amazing. The gore, the special effects, the practical ones are spectacular. Oof. I think the acting overall is really good. Um, yeah. And I think that there are just it's just it's a, it's a very a lot of these scenes will eventually be on like the top ten best scenes in horror movies, like stuff like that. But yep. I totally agree with you, Nikisha. This movie, I think, was supposed to land more emotionally, and then it then it did for me because mm-hmm. I, I that he, he that was on him. Everything he did, in the, and I know you're supposed to find that like devastating and like mm-hmm. you know teach you that like you know he he essentially dug his own grave and all of that and his sadness right. and all of that. I I I I didn't care about him. Like I was like, you deserve this. Like, yep. that's what happened to you based on your decisions. And I just, like, I, I know it was supposed to be more bleak and horrible, but, like, I, I just, it didn't emotionally get me. I also don't think that they that they did enough with his autistic son. Yeah. I, I thought yeah, yeah. that was one of the more fascinating things and concepts and features that this movie brings up. And I don't, mm-hmm. I just don't think they explained it enough. I think that whatever his son mm-hmm. was going through and how his, how his, you know, his psyche was handling everything. Yep. Um, I needed more explanation and clarity there. The ambiguity of it did not work for me. Yeah. But it's still very memorable. And so it's number nine. 
Right. Exactly. Yeah. Especially uh, the rules in that situation too, because like when, when he's, like you said, dealing with what he's dealing with, it's like, how, how is that happening though with his autism and like his brain and and the mentality of it all? I needed a little bit more explanation there. However, I mean, I'd be remiss to leave this off the top 10 just based on some of those sequences. For sure. Yeah, Yeah. I agree. Solid. It's a, it's a solid uh, film. Totally. I don't think it should. I mean, it's like number one on Rotten Tomatoes. It's like, I think there's other stuff that's a little more totally. put together than that. Yeah. But, and yeah. obviously this is very um, subjective. It's, it's all subjective. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Jamie, what's at your number eight? My number eight is Totally Killer. Ooh, that's on my all list. Right. That's on my list, too. Oh, great. Fantastic. Uh, Nikisha, what's your number eight? Scream six. That's on my list. Okay. Is that on my list? (laughs) Jamie's like, wait a second. (laughs) (laughs) Nope. I should put that as an honorable mention, then. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Woo! So I'll wait till it comes up for you, Brian. Yeah. Uh, My number eight is Birth Rebirth. Not on my list. Not on my list. I didn't watch it. Yeah. yeah so Birth it. Birth Rebirth stars Marin Ireland, who we all watched in uh, Dark um, and the, Wicked. the Dark and the Wicked. She played the daughter mm. in that one. Um, and then Judy Reyes, who we all oh, know as Carla. Man. She was in The Boogeyman, too. Oh, yeah. She was in The Boogeyman this year, too. Mm-hmm. Um, Which we also watched. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, and, and Judy Reyes, uh, Carla from Scrubs, is in this movie. And mm. for those of you who don't know, this movie is about two women played by Marin Island and Judy Reyes. Uh, Marin Island is this um, is this brilliant scientist, uh, you, you know, works in the pathology lab um, in in a hospital, um, and um, and and but is not socially inept, like or is socially inept. Is that what I'm trying to? Say? Is mm-hmm. is is socially awful? Is socially inept? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Judy Reyes is a nurse, uh, a, a a delivery nurse, um, who uh, has a young daughter. Anyway, long story short, the daughter passes away while she's at work, um, and the body goes missing. Uh, like like they bring it to the hospital, and the body goes missing. Your face, and Nikisha. <laughs> no, it's just like so random. <laughs> no, and so essentially, what we learn is that the Marin Ireland character is trying to figure out the science of reviving somebody who's dead. So it's a Frankenstein spin. And then mm. Judy Reyes like ends up like questioning her and finds the, the body um, like alive. And then, so like her daughter is alive and, and it's, it basic, it's a slow burn Frankenstein esque movie about what would you do in this scenario? Like how far is Marin mm. Ireland going to go? And like, and, and how, how far is her mother going to go? Where are they going to clash? You know, Judy Ray starts as this more empathetic type character, but then once, you know, and then, and then it just like, <clears throat> it's that type of a drama. Um, it's not gory. It's not like any of that stuff. It's just fascinating. And I was absolutely, it, the, the ending was totally earned for me. I would highly suggest this movie. And this movie really works because of the two performances. The, okay. these they're incredible i really dug this movie it's way low-key um but i really really liked it it's very clear that the um uh that the the first the director of this who who's amazing loves frankenstein and mary shelley and like and i i thought and you don't need to know the frankenstein story to appreciate what this is um yeah. but i super dug it nice um um yeah, the director is Laura Moss, who is who's wonderful. Um, okay. Cool. So that was my number eight. Um, Jimmy, what's at your number seven spot? My number seven is Infinity Pool. Mm. That is my number thirteen. So it's not on my top ten. It's not on my list either. Cool. It was um, my honorable mention. So yeah, <laughs> uh, I I really liked this movie. Um, especially with as much time that has now passed. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I do think about it every so often because I think about Mia Goth screaming, Jane! 
oh. slay all the time. Um, Always an this excellent movie performance. This movie is just so fucking weird. Yeah. And, and I think, I honestly, I think that I really liked weird movies this year. Um, the more that I'm like reflecting on the things that really brought me joy. Um, mm-hmm. Doesn't necessarily mean it's good. And obviously, as, as you know, as you're going through your lists, there's a lot of things that I avoided just like thematically. I know what a lot of these movies were already about when I was yeah. like, you know what? I'm going to pass, even if it's good, because I think I mentioned this in like other episodes, like my my temperament for handling certain things I I, I have found is uh, has lessened. So give yeah. me the the great fun times. But this one's a real like wild ride. Um, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, Alexander Skarsgård goes on mm-hmm. vacation to another country with his partner and, um, you know, ac- not accidentally. He drives drunk and accidentally kills somebody. And the punishment in this country is that they make a clone of you and your clone essentially is like sentenced to forms of torture and death. Um, and through this experience, he meets a group of, uh, another group of tourists who are like obsessed with this experience, this like weird death tourism that they do. And they come every year and it's like just debaucherous and unhinged and like chaotic and he just gets wrapped up in all of that and it's like totally ruining his life but like it's just it's just an absolute wild ride i would say like there's body horror in it um mm-hmm. it's just very weird uh uh what's his face his son it's uh Brandon Cronenberg, Brandon Cronenberg. um who like i'm i'm very excited to continue to see like what else he does in his career he's really making a name like totally standing out on his own i'm really enjoying his films and like this is another super weird one and yeah i just keep james you know (laughs) that in the the psychedelic scene yeah yeah. the masks masks. yeah they're so disturbing the more that you talk about it the more that i think it maybe should have been like in my number 10 spot only because like That's one I really do remember vividly and the themes and what it was trying to say about the rich and then Mm -hmm. like going back to your life and whatnot. Also, shout out to Cleopatra Coleman, who's in that and Cobweb this year. Um, Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, um, good pick. Really good pick. Yeah. Nikisha, did you see Possessor? I forget. Yeah. Didn't we do... Oh, we did not do an episode on it, but I did see it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That movie fucked me up. That movie, yeah. Brian was like so, his brain was like broken after we watched that That movie. That movie really. I really liked that movie. I don't know why. (laughs) I know I do too. It It made me, it, that, we've seen tons of bloody movies, tons of crazy movies on this podcast and in our Mm -hmm. own lives. Mm-hmm. something about him not being able to get out of the her i should say not being mm-hmm. able to get out of that body really made me uncomfortable yep it is ugh. yeah yeah, yeah. I can't. anyway <laughs> Spooky um <laughs> yeah nikisha what was your number seven that was your number seven jamie yeah uh yes was... um talk to me was number seven for me that's on my list that's on my list as well yeah fantastic uh, my number seven is Scream Six. Great, talk away. And that's not on your list. I forgot so it we came out. Talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so um, embarrassing. <laughs> no, we cover a lot. I I just forget every Q one movie. I need to figure out a better way to like recommit them to memory. We need like a recap before the recap. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, Here's Let It list. Rocks is how I did it. Yeah, because no. That's that's how I did it. I but I did it and I stared at it and I still forgot it. <laughs> Literally, uh, I'd well, go through our podcast list first. Yeah, like, yeah. what do we cover? And then... but I, I also make a separate list in Letterbox of 2023 horror movies I saw. Yeah. Mm. Um, but Scream Six was one of them. I saw it twice. Um, I just had a blast, and yeah. I think hot take. I think, and and we don't have to talk about Scream Seven or or yet, um, mm-hmm. but I think that Scream Six may be one of the best uses of New York City in a horror movie, just mm-hmm. because it's not like 
I'm in Times Square and like someone's chasing. It's like it just yep. felt like it was a lived in New York bodegas, uh, apartment buildings, more uptown near Columbia and stuff like that. Like I thought it was way more interesting. I thought the opening sequence was awesome. I thought the reveal was really fun. I thought yes. all the meta stuff with like the theater with everything in it was awesome. You know, mm-hmm. taking away, you know, New York geography for a second. Like I really thought that the movie was a ton and the ladder. No one has a big that ladder that no one has a ladder that big in their apartment. But no. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought the fake outs <laughs> and the red herrings were fun. I I thought that Return of Kirby was fun, whether or not you believe yes, it or not. Kirby. Um I just thought it was I just thought it was a blast. And I like how it was meta and reflective of Scream 2. Mm-hmm. It's, and it seems like it's like following the formula to yeah. right is like what people are assuming. Uh, so yeah, mm-hmm. I for all those reasons that's that you said, Brian, I I agree. That's why it's on my list too. And you know, Scream is always just going to have like a special place in my sure. heart uh, as a slasher person. Um, that's just my subgenre that I love. So, uh, but yeah, Brian, I will I will never forget that opening sequence and how that kind of turned everything else on its head, like having that reveal so early on yeah. and then you're like, Oh, well then what's the rest of this going to be about? So, um, yeah. yeah. That's also, the- also shout out to the core four. Core four. <laughs> They're great. Uh, <laughs> and I also thought the sound design, just the, like mm. the knife slashes and like the sharpening of it and the stabs and all that movie. I thought a lot were just, of like, like deep gutty yeah, stabs. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, I mean, it definitely, they, they lived up to the expectation of like, this was probably the most brutal that we've seen yeah. so far mm-hmm. in the whole chain. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, let's cool. move on to our number six for everyone. Jamie, what was your number <laughs> six? Um, so my number six is The Offering. Ooh. All right. I did not watch that. I, I love, yeah. Let's talk about it. I I don't know why, but like, there's something very. Oh my god, the the dryer just jump scared me. Um, <laughs> there was some, and I know that this movie like didn't do critically that well, but I I keep thinking about it. Like I am, I've been thinking about this movie for a while. Um, it's. Uh, it's it's centered around like a Jewish family, a Jewish like possession movie, which you don't see a lot of. And I'm always like interested in those, like the few where you have like a Dybbuk and whatnot, but like less of that, uh, more of just a, uh, they this family who owns a like funeral parlor uh, gets involved with a demon that is the taker of children, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um and uh yeah they're they're just not they're dabbling in some some scary things but like i think just the the family dynamics in this were really interesting um you know between like the the son and his father the son and his wife um the son and his like family friend who also works at the funeral parlor who's kind of like wrote him off because he's you know for lack of a better word, a schmuck and like, hasn't like, he doesn't really have his act together, the son. And Mm -hmm. he's there, um, you know, asking his, he's there essentially to ask his dad for like money. Um, he's having money issues and, um, his dad unexpectedly dies after the son who's helping out in the funeral home, fucks stuff up, um, and like hides it. And then it all comes back to bite them in the ass. And like, I, I, you know, when the wife gets involved, uh, it's, it's just like really intense. She's also like super pregnant. Um, Mm. and so again, like another movie that's like dealing with like pregnancy. Um, it was just, it really, it really scared me. And I think that's why I keep thinking about it a lot. I think about the ending scene very frequently. And again, I am somebody who does, who like, prefers happy-ish endings with my horror movies. I know maybe I'm in the minority. I have a harder time with movies that like don't end 
like pleasantly. And this movie ends not well for this family. So I can't explain it, but like, I just think, I think it was much better than like a lot of the critics gave it credit for. And um, yeah, yeah, it, it really, I think just like it's lasting power in my brain is what boosted it so high on my list. Yeah. Um, I love a horror movie that doesn't, is not firing on all cylinders in terms of like, I think that the, like taking this movie, for example, I thought that the husband and wife's relationship didn't feel realistic in some ways. Mm. And I thought that there were a lot of other random things in this that didn't totally work for me, but like that didn't matter. I really enjoyed this movie a lot. Like, so I love a movie that like, I see the flaws in it and it doesn't matter to me because how they're telling the story and the story they're telling, like there's something wrong with the children. Um, like it's just like really sticks with me. And I agree with you, Jamie, a lot of those scenes and, and a lot of that filming and cinematography really stuck with me. Um, that was number, it was, it was 18 on my list. Um, Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, I mean, the only two movies I watched twice this year were the offering and scream six. So, and I mean, I guess that says something for sure. Yeah. You, cause you watched it without me. And the way you were describing it, I was like, oh, I really, I want, I need to see this. Like, I need yeah. to actually, like, sit in front of everything that you've described to me. And it it was, I'm really glad that I did. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. Um, nice. Nikisha, what was your number six? The conference. Oh, I'm so happy you liked it. Uh, it's <gasps> it's number 17 on my list, so it's not in my top 10. Mm-hmm. I did not uh, see uh, it. And Jamie didn't watch it. But yeah, go for it. <sighs> Um, what is it? It's uh, Swedish. Swedish. It's a Swedish slasher movie that Brian suggested that I watch. And I just had a good old cackle, laughable <laughs> good time watching it. Now, I will say it was hard to kind of follow like the Swedish language is a little was a little harsh on my ears. But even I was trying to like see what the dub might sound like and the dub was awful because the dubs are always awful so i'm like okay Mm. i'm just gonna say it through it in in swedish and subtitles and but the gore was fantastic it's witty it's basically essentially just about these uh company this these company members uh taking a um what is it like a job um like a professional development development. like yes thank you retreat yes a professional development retreat um, because they're trying to build a mall in this place and like the people don't want the mall there, but you know, um, because it is taking from like people's lands and stuff to make the mall. Uh, and so the people in the town are not like a fan of it, but anyway, so these people are at this retreat and someone is just picking them off one by one. Uh, and I, if you just like a good classic slasher with really good kind of comedic timing and if you know what, the comedy kind of reminds me of like Parks and Rec or The Office. Like yeah. Oh, how, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it's that That's kind funny. of comedy, but then people are literally getting like hung up on flagpoles. <laughs> and, you know, like it's it's just a lot of blood and, and gore. And so I just had a really good time uh, watching it. So again, if, if you just want like a really fun slasher movie, I, the conference is it. It's, I it's really on Netflix. It. And it's on Netflix, yeah. Um, yeah, I really liked it too. <clears throat> I thought that the mask was really fun that the slasher would wear. Oh, would yeah. Um, I thought that of all the slashers um, this this year, I thought it had the worst, the my favorite people that were awful to get killed. Does that make yes. sense? Like it was an yes. abundance of toxic people that I so happy that I was watching a slasher, knowing mm-hmm. that they were going to all you know get their due. Um, yes. uh, especially mm-hmm. the uh, the guy who like is scalped at the end or whatever it is. How hilarious and amazing that yeah. was! Yeah, he was the actual worst because it also just reminds me of just like right now on TikTok, there's like corporate humor going around of yeah, like uh-huh. how people are, you know, in offices and stuff mm. like that. And so I just thought that it kind of added to the what zeitgeist, I guess, of that um, yeah. nature. And it was just very, it was very fun to to watch that and see. It's like literally like your worst coworkers 
and they're just getting slashed and you're like yeah this is satisfying <laughs> yeah it was very it was a very satisfying movie for sure yes um cool my number six was totally killer nice mine's still uh, up there so yeah great um all right we're on fives jamie what's your number five cool so my number five is <laughs> thanksgiving that's on my list it's on my list great uh my number five is uh saw 10 <laughs> that's on my list that is not on my list that was number 15 okay. for me okay um all right my number five uh is thanksgiving Yay. okay fantastic all right so, so that was that round we still yes. are waiting for nikisha's thanksgiving yes We're still waiting for nikisha's totally killer uh -huh. um cool yeah. um uh jamie what is your number we're in four now yeah mm -hmm. what's your number four my number four is saw x Oy. my number four is thanksgiving <laughs> well, hey. so let's talk about uh, Thanksgiving. Let's talk about no Saw X. Oh, Saw X, because it's not on your list. Yeah. Right. No, right. right. Okay. 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 Go ahead, Jamie. Go for us. It's Saw, baby. It's even Saw's though, back. <laughs> it, Saw is back. And even though I saw this in 4DX and wanted to vomit, I had a great <laughs> time. Yes. Like that's, that's really telling. <laughs> yes. The fact that the, you're literally getting jerked from side to side, <laughs> but you can still follow the movie and still have an enjoyable time. Like, yes. Yeah. This like a return to form for this chain, bringing us back to the people that we care most about. Like mm -hmm. at this point, like we know that there's going to be time jumblies and whatnot, but like, I for don't sure. care. Like, I don't care that Saw 11 is going to take place after Saw 10. They're just adding all this time in between Saw 2 and Saw 3 because, like, we just need more uh, John Kramer being alive. Like, that's, that's it. That's, that's literally it. all that the people are asking for. Yes. And how and they made it work in a sensible way. Yeah. So, like, this He's is so yes, compelling. Absolutely. It's yes. wild. Like, just seeing him in those, like, early phases – seeing him with Amanda, like both of them mm -hmm. together. Um, they really expand his like character. They, they just do so much character development in this around like, you know, his, his code and his relationship to dying and then finding out that he like might actually have the rest of his life. And how does that impact this, this life's work that he, you know, started on and then yep. it's all taken away. And then we get back into, you know, classic traps, but like, it was great seeing him. It was great seeing Amanda. And quite frankly, this new psychopathic doctor that we have that like, yes. man, I, I hope that she's back in this next one. Like I want to see them go head to head. Yeah. That's all I want. But like, she was a great, like even worse villain than Jigsaw yeah. to, to, to hang out with. Like it was just a great time. Great traps that made me cringe and hide um yeah I, like what's more to say this is a this is a really excellent saw film yeah i think just because it's like i i'm such a fan of the chain in general and to see it just go back to its roots was just very satisfying and like you said jamie for um Kramer to have a worthy adversary mm -hmm. was just like really incredible and um thrilling to watch them go head to head so I'm excited at for what Saw 11 could be and hopefully they'll keep going in this direction um because yeah I mean <laughs> I'll see nine more saws in between two and three <laughs> I don't care I, I do don't care. care as long as they are bringing the same like quality and and like you know just continuing to develop his character because that's it was just so comp i was like why am i rooting for for this like psychopath but like exactly that's that's a good they did a good job yep yeah i'm a fan love it <laughs> <laughs> um i i really like this movie too um it's just i just like others more yeah <laughs> not saw trap things. Yeah. Mm. Is it because of the stab? You got stabbed in the back in the movie. No, <laughs> I liked all of that. I was I was right in the, the mix of it all. 
Um, love it. All right. And uh, Thanksgiving. Everyone said Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for everybody except for Europeans. Bosbergers. <laughs> <laughs> amazing <laughs> uh, yeah I, I i i this was so much fun like so, so fun. much fun i thought that this movie was funny clever um well acted re- it was, i'm so happy that the mystery even though we guessed it the mystery was still fun yes. um and at the end of the day the reason for me that this movie is great Yes, the kills are great and everything we just said, but it never forgets that it's a Thanksgiving themed movie. And Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of themed movies forget that. And this committed to it the whole way through from the opening sequence, the awesome opening sequence on a Black Friday to the parade stuff and like the lines Mm -hmm. at the end of the movie and all of that stuff. So like this was just like, and and I think seeing it in theaters helped too, because this was just mm-hmm. an absolute blast where everyone in the theater was having an absolute blast. Yeah, I agree. The kills were great. The gore was great. The one-liners, it just didn't, it also didn't take itself too seriously either. Mm-hmm. So I think it was just a good balance of like the slasher with the comedy and uh, all the while being Thanksgiving. And wow, they, he really roasted a woman, an entire woman's body. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. I mean, they just really commit the entire time to Thanksgiving and like mm-hmm. that's, that is what made this movie good. Also, like that opening scene on Black Friday needed to be compelling enough to like justify the rest of the movie. And I do yes. think it really delivered. It was wildly gory. Um, and like just I'm, you know, I'm excited for Eli Roth having this comeback moment. Yeah. yeah. Also, another uh, introduction to a great mask and a- another yeah. costume. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. like, we also had really like a solid. lot. Just in general, we had a lot of great like horror movies that are going to end up being franchises this year. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like this, like mm-hmm. Five Nights at Freddy's, like Talk to Me, like mm-hmm. um, uh, some I other. We get into that when we talk about anticipated yeah. and things. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Um, cool. Um, so your uh, number four, Brian. My number four is my girl and yours. Mathrigan, Megan. Yeah, she's on my list too. She's on my list. Excellent. <laughs> uh, yeah, so my number four is Megan. Cool. Uh, Jamie, what is your number three? My number three stands for the three in her name. I oh. got Megan. <laughs> <laughs> she's still up there on my list. So. Ooh. Oh wow! What's yours, <laughs> Nikisha? What? So this is your. <laughs> Number, Number three, three for me is Evil Dead Rise, baby. Mm. It's on my list. It's on my list. Yeah. <laughs> this is um, exciting. Yeah. My number three oh. is Quisera the Bone Woman. Really? Yeah. Um, okay. I love a good Alec. I'm assuming it's not on anyone else's list. I didn't see it. I saw it, but it's not on my list. Oh, you did? Okay. I did. I, I saw it. Yeah. I love a good allegory movie. I, I think this is a cracking. Yeah, crack. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> um, <laughs> we should have done a trigger warning at the beginning of the episode oh, yeah. for bone cracks. <laughs> oh, that shit oh freaks me god. out. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I should have done a warning before I just went right into it. Trigger warning for Nakisha. I can't <laughs> my fingers. <laughs> dim bones. Dim bones. Dim yeah, bones that's right. Dim real. bones. <laughs> um. Yeah, Ooh. I thought this movie is was great. Um, mm. I thought that I love a good allegory movie. This is a great allegory movie. Mm. I think that the concept in this movie was well executed. This tortured woman um, who, again, kind of gets into being pregnant and married because she thinks that's what society wants. And she kind of like chooses this life for herself to fill the shoes of a brother who's no longer there. So she would be the good sibling. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I think that the tension building in this movie is spectacular. Like, especially when she's babysitting the kids. 
um, and all of yeah. that. Um, and honestly, I like that this movie really talks about the anticipation of the excitement of trying to have a kid and then the um, the fear of like, how is it going to change who you are as a person? And are you willing to give yourself over to this other person all while it's inside of you? Um, then I like the idea that this movie really goes into the postpartum aspect of things. Um, mm. And I think that this idea of the bone woman who only appears every time she starts to have anxiety or, you know, the bone woman appears when the kids, when her niece and nephew are being awful, the bone woman appears when she can't sleep at night and is like having doubts about what she wants. And the mm -hmm. bone woman appears when she ha is having, you know, postpartum depression and like, can't listen to the baby crying anymore. And it gets worse and worse and worse. And there's that whole B story plot line about her, you know, getting uh, reconnecting with her ex-girlfriend who she left because that's not what society wanted her to do, even though that's what she wanted to do. Anyway, yeah. I thought all of that was really good in addition to the horror sequences and the sound design of the bones cracking and all of that. And then that last sequence of the seance they do with her in the mm. woods and all of that I thought was super memorable. And honestly, I think this movie takes a huge swing at the end and how it ends. I think yeah. that the ending of this movie justifies what the whole movie is trying to do. And I think that sure. I am very excited um, to see Michelle Garza Serva's um, Cervera uh, uh, next movie. Um, whatever it may be. I think that she as the director was great. I think this was well written. I think this is the best of the child mother pregnancy theme movies this year. Mm. Um, and I just was totally entranced by this movie. I thought it was really spectacular. Yeah. Maybe I'm just not a fan of like heavy allegory in movies sure. because this was on the top this was also like what number two or three on like Rotten Tomatoes top horror oh, was of the it? year. Yeah. It was this and when evil lurks. And uh I think I was just expecting something different. I think I was expecting it just to be uh a lot more more gore, you know, and like sure. with the monster and stuff. And so I think I was just more heavily focused on like where is this monster as opposed to like what the movie is trying to say. I'll be honest, how you explained it, Brian, makes me like it more than just like actually watching it. <laughs> sure, sure. So like, um, yeah. So let's take this one and compare it to It Lives Inside. To me, It Lives mm. Inside didn't like tension build as much as I wanted it to. It was yeah. it was very heavy handed, as I mentioned earlier in this episode, on like the uh, the like immigrant experience and and or I should say For like sure. second generation immigrants. Yes. Um, in terms of like assimilating and and being torn between, you know, your culture and like trying to be an American, you know, kid in high school. Um, that was just like very, I got it. But in this one, I think it was a little bit more, um, it was a it was a little bit more uh, massaged into it. And I thought oh, that the yeah. tension building in this one and like when like the burning when she's just being that whole sequence where the friends are over and she's basically being presented as like just a womb to them yes um mm -hmm. and then like and then that's when like the um i think the crib breaks and then yeah, she burns yeah, it yeah. and stuff like that like i just thought all that stuff was just like really terrifying even if the bone woman wasn't in this if that makes sense I gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And I also agree with you. I think that the ending uh, was perfect. I think that's the only way that it should have ended. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Surprising, but inevitable, I guess, is the way. That right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it makes sense. You're not like surprised, you know. <laughs> right. Right. Totally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so that was my number three with Sarah, the bone woman. Uh, nice. <clears throat> cool. Um, Jamie, what's your number two? My number two is Evil Dead Rise. Woo woo. Uh, it's, it's still on my list. Okay. Wow. Uh, my number two is totally killer. So how all right, let's talk that? totally killer. That's the that's the highest. So I had it at six. Uh, you had it, it at eight. two, and Jamie had it at eight. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it, Nikisha. Man, I just had the best time watching this. I thought it was 
well crafted. Of course, our girl Sabrina, uh, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, is starring in it. Um, I thought that she did a fantastic job. I thought it was um, a great ensemble company as well. I'm not a Back to the Future fan, but you, if you give me Back to the Future with gore, like I'm in with a with a trying to find a killer. Like this is this is it. This is the movie for me. I also loved how it was making fun of the '80s and um, kind of. Uh, idolizing it but also calling it out for like what it was uh mm -hmm. in the time period and and how far we've come uh from that time period um and i i had a good time of like trying to figure out who did it you know and and following the yeah. storyline and um i i think i was just surprised that i was that i liked it as much as i did um which is why it's so high on my list because i i was excited to watch it, but I have very low expectations and it like exceeded those. So. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. I was shocked at how much I liked this, even though this was yeah. like very much up my alley. I thought, I thought that two, a couple things separated this from the rest. I thought the mystery was very fun. And I thought the, the outcome of that mystery was very clever. Um, mm -hmm. I thought that the acting, especially from um, Sally Draper, uh, was spectacular. I think this movie is genuinely funny, not mm -hmm. not fake horror movie funny. This was like yes. actually funny on every level. Um, you know, I, I meta funny and regular funny. Um, mm -hmm. and and Jamie and I talked about this while the movie was while we were watching it. I don't remember if I've ever seen or the last time I've seen a time travel movie that splits its time between the present and the past. Yeah. I really yeah. liked how <laughs> things were changing in real time, both physically and their memories as mm -hmm. she's going and changing things in the past. I thought that was awesome. And that yeah. kept the movie from being too predictable. Um, uh, in, in general, but, but I just like, I had an absolute blast with this. Um, yeah. And to your point about that too, like we love the rule system and I thought it was hilarious at the end too, where it's like, yeah, all this shit has changed. And so here's a book of everything that has changed. Yeah. yeah. I loved it because mm -hmm. you, you know, messed with the past. So this is what, and you're, by the way, your name is not your name anymore. Like, <laughs> like great joke. And great. And, and, and I think at some point someone said the principal, no, that the, who says to her at some point during this, like the, every time travel movie has a joke where they're just mm -hmm. like, don't think about just it don't too hard. Don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, and, uh -huh. and when that, and honestly, I need that sometimes in those mm -hmm. movies to be like, yeah. Hey, like just chill the fuck out. This like is like it's fun. time travel. Like, this yeah. Is not, yeah. Like suspend but your disbelief. <laughs> thought it was great. I thought all the like, all the teen jokes were funny. I thought all the characters were very clearly drawn. Um, yes. And uh, all the jokes about like blowjobs and all the jokes about like how free these kids were with sex and stuff like that and mm -hmm. talking about it, like really made it very funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I loved it. Had a good time. It was really yeah. fun. Oh, one Man. thing that I didn't like about it, though, is I did not like the mask. Mmm. Because what was the, what was the mask? Beavis or Butthead? No, they don't say what it is. Right. They don't, but I think it's like a Beavis or Butthead mask. I, I never watched is. Beavis and Butthead. I think it's Beavis. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just made that up. I'm going to look this Beavis up. Beavis or Butthead. Okay. butthead. <laughs> Um, yeah, I get that. It was pretty generic. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember them saying, like, the origins of the mask. Mm -hmm. Oh. It's just like everyone just wears the it The Psycho's <laughs> mask in Totally Killer was inspired by Kiefer Sutherland, Dolph Lundgren, and Rob Lowe. So they basically, like, combined all these, like, uh, <laughs> 80s, you know, figures and kind of put it into one mask that ended up looking like, like Beavis. <laughs> Great. fantastic also Sorry. shout out to the director who also directed always be my maybe um oh that's a cute movie a great movie yeah totally yeah um but okay. kieran shipka is really good in this movie like really yeah good. Mm -hmm. oh and the opening fight sequence with julie bowen 
around the house oh. was awesome. Oh, yeah. That was so good when she had all the hidden weapons all around. Solid, I really enjoyed man. it. She yeah. really held her own. Yeah. 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 This it was a great movie. I'm really happy we all liked it. It was a it was yeah. it was a killer time. Hey. Totally. Um, cool. Um, you both did your number two. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I... <laughs> we, we both did our number twos. Yeah, yeah. we sure did. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go. Uh, my number two is Evil Dead Rise. Yay! So we talk about it now. Yes. No. Uh, did you yes. say it already, Nikisha? It's my number three. It was oh, yeah. Then two. we all said it. Okay. We said Man, talk about a movie that I was, like, so excited when it came to streaming so that I could watch it again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, it's just such the epitome of... And, of course, y'all know my journey for Evil Dead. I was like, what yeah. the hell is this? I'm so... Ha- That's a good point, Nikisha. Yes. I'm so exactly. happy that this ranks so mm-hmm. highly. And 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 probably because we went on that Evil Dead journey this year. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. If I were... I probably You're still welcome. would have liked it. No, thank you. Truly. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> no, but truly, yeah, thank you. Because I, I, I know that I would have had a difference of opinion if we hadn't gone through that journey i feel like i still would have liked evil dead because the gore just sat so well with me it was just beautiful to watch Mm -hmm. but i wouldn't have gotten some of more of the nuance to really take it over the top for me if i hadn't watched the other movies Mm -hmm. and no and and uh talked with you guys about what the tone of the movies were Mm -hmm. you know um so yeah i i loved i loved the gore uh so much blood so many good kills uh the the practical effects were fantastic the them all molding together into one like monster mm-hmm. at the end was like super cool um but also a movie about mothers and and um children and yeah that's you true. know yeah like having kids good. or not wanting to have kids in whatever journey you are in your life um yeah so i just thought that it, it held up uh really well and i think that it had one of my favorite title cards of the mm. year yeah definitely mm-hmm. um so yeah that was it's wonderful had a great time yeah jamie i mean evil dead evil dead the chain is probably my favorite horror chain um i just i love these movies so so much and i'm just happy that you know they continue to deliver like an updated contemporary version that's like just as gory, but also like while still putting a spin, but it's still speaking to like the original, I would say like theme and vibes of the, of like the eighties versions. Um, Yeah. I, yeah. I'm just like, I hope that they continue to, to hit all of those beats. Um, I know that like some, some Evil Dead fans maybe feel differently, but like I'm just I continue to be impressed with like how this chain continues to evolve. And here's hoping for you know Evil Dead ascends 2025. <laughs> yeah. Obsessed. Um, I agree with both of you, and I'll also <clears throat> add that like really a lot of there's a lot of vivid imagery in this movie that I remember that is inclusive <laughs> of like grater. the makeup. The performance is the cheese grater for Ooh. sure. The cheese grater. Oh, Stephanie. The glass. Stephanie, That's... the glass. That's... I also re- just I thought the setup of this movie was brilliant. Mm-hmm. Like just like just you know reminiscent of other movies, keeping them on that floor. The elevator being the like vines. You know this time, mm-hmm. like I just thought it all really really worked for me. You know, we talked a little bit about in the episode we did on it, we talked a little bit like the things that were a little bit unclear, uh, like the relationships and what it was actually trying to say thematically. But at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter um, because it was just a really good time. And the theater, too, was like really into it when we saw it. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, cool. So that was our number two. Now we all have our number ones left. Which I think I'm, process of elimination. I think I shouldn't. know process of elimination. I I, I think we're going to talk about uh, one of our girls first, and then we're gonna, and then we're gonna well. Jamie has it. to go first, right? I know, but one. but oh, okay. but but I know. Oh yeah, this is like clue. 
Like, I know mm-hmm. that we're not going to talk about her movie until I go. Mm-hmm. So, Jamie, what was your number one of the year? Um, as Ricky Martin so eloquently puts it, talk to me. I knew it. Tell me your name. Uh, Nikisha, what was your number one movie of the year? She's my girl. <laughs> I just love her. I want to be her friend, too. Sing, I am titanium to me. A cultural phenomenon, an icon, especially in the Lujibitaqua community now. Um, Megan, I love you, girl. Come be my best friend. Can't wait for the sequel. Ready to download you from your uploaded cloud. (laughs) (laughs) You know, as predictable as it was, it followed like by the book, by the numbers. There was just something so much fun there are so many memorable things about this movie Uh, scenes and 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 moments and and all of that and you know whether you watch the theatrical version or if you watch the you know the unrated version uh Mm -hmm. with just you know not much has changed it's just a little bit bloodier the kills and stuff like that like it's just it's just a barrel of fun and i i just think that once they leaned into the silliness of it all, and especially like the movie theater that we went to was just so into it at the, at the like Thursday night showing, Mm -hmm. it was just like, we were all laughing. Nobody was taking it seriously in the best way possible. And if you try and take it seriously as a horror movie, I, I also, this is just a hot, hot take. I think that because of quote elevated horror, um, you know, I'm just I'm using that in quotes because like that's a subjective term, obviously. I yeah. feel like movies like this really are divisive because mm-hmm. you either lean into it or you 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 don't you're just not anticipating it and you have to change your expectations like fast or you're gonna mm-hmm. miss the fun of it all. Yes. Uh, and I think that this movie opening with that stupid com- fake commercial oh, like yeah. makes like sets the tone perfectly for this so i i just i'm so happy this was your number one nikisha yeah no it's it just like a, a a really fun time and i think you know to uh give props to marketing um for this i think that it helped to set your expectation of what it was going to be. Because I know at first, when we got first glimpse of it, you think it's going to be more of like a serious, like kind of like chucky S, like at the beginning, Chucky, you know, like mm. horror doll movie, right? But then after you see kind of the silliness of it, and I mean, the minute that she started singing, I'm like, yeah, this is the camp that I, that I need in my life. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a, a fun, a fun ride. I saw the unrated version and yeah, it's just a little bit more blood, but it's still just such a good story and so well acted too by, by everyone. Like, I don't think anyone was a weak link in, yeah. in this. Oh. Yeah. Also, this was like the only movie that I actually remember from the beginning of 2023 ah. <laughs> to be totally honest. Go. Like yes. it just had such staying power. Um, yeah, like like you said, I think everybody really committed. Like they just like went all in on it and and no one like wavered and I think that really made it great. And I yeah, I'm just like I'm very excited for this new era of like Blumhouse and this was also the first like James Wan collab, right? Like wasn't this mm. didn't he did he produce this one? And it was he them did. He together. produced it and had a story credit on it. I don't yeah. know if this is his mm. first like co-production with Atomic Monster, but it's one of the first. Yeah, I just like I'm. I'm. It makes me excited about like these other kind of like maybe silly premises that we have of like upcoming 2024 horror that I feel like if they can kind of hit similar beats within their own, like whatever, you know, whether it's night swim or like imaginary, if they can like kind of hit these, I think that it would be really effective if they similarly don't take themselves too seriously. Mm, And like, but like also like really commit to the theme the whole way through. Like, I think that's, that's just what made 
Megan so effective. Mm-hmm. So effective. Yeah. She was in my top, and I my top three have just been, like, rotating back and forth. Yeah. Uh, Mithrigan was my top for the year for, like, most of this year. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I... I found making, and we'll talk about the number. My number one was talk to me, mm-hmm. um, and we'll talk about it in a second. But like, shake me <laughs> up. Um, I really thought, and as we're talking through all of these, my one through fifteen, maybe my one through. That's not true. Like my top five are my top five, but everything underneath my top five through like the fifteen twenty could have easily been interchanged with each other. I just thought mm. a lot of these, nothing was as powerful as some of the movies last year, like Barbarian, like Pearl. You know, the closest one is Talk to Me, to me, mm. or, or Evil Dead Rise. But like, mm. I I just, I just, I found these a little bit more flexible in my list than last year, where I was like very sure of where everything landed on my list last year. I don't know if you two yeah, felt that was as hard. Well. No, I thought it was, it was hard. Mm-hmm. trying to make this list and see um which is why i had to kind of give myself some parameters because i feel like a lot of these could be kind of interchanged but yeah yeah this one was like I, what who did i have the most fun watching? yeah no that's a really good point because like i do think that i think 2022 was one of the best years for horror but i still i think that 2023 like really continue to ride that train for like as long as yeah. it could. Um, mm-hmm. This was by no means a disappointing year for horror at all. And no. I just like, I'm really excited. I just feel like we're on this like really good path moving forward where like, yes, they're coming out with a lot of things, a lot of really good things. We have a lot of like, you know, reinvigorating of existing chains, but also like some really fresh new ideas and it just makes me really excited because again horror will always make money we will see all of these movies keep yeah. making them take we love my them. money give me the movie and i will give you my money yes <laughs> <laughs> um, fantastic yeah so talk to me about talk to me oh man i just i really i loved this movie um I feel like maybe for some people they thought it was a little bit overhyped, but like I just, I loved it. I loved how, again, like talking about like fresh, interesting concepts. It's like both not in in the sense of like, you know, like a, excuse me, like a teen, you know, teen, I was going to say like a teen sex comedy, but you like take out the, the sex and the comedy and you replace mm-hmm. it with uh, terrifying horror. But, like, yes. just the this element of, like, all these teenagers coming together and, like, not taking any of this seriously when they should. And then everything terrible that you can ever think of goes wrong. Um, I will never forget that that party sequence with that song that is, like, such an earworm that I hear on TikTok, like, every third TikTok – it's so good. <laughs> mm-hmm. But like, I loved that scene because that's a, that's a scene that you see again, like in a teen sex comedy, like in any other movie with teens where they're all like smoking weed and drinking mm-hmm. and like partying, except instead they fucking replaced it with this possession hand. And I just thought that was the most brilliant thing ever watching them all just fuck around and be possessed and have the time of their lives because they're dumb teens and their brains aren't full formed so they are not thinking about the consequences of their actions right love obsessed i i could i could have watched that one scene for like five hours um so like that just really stands out um just the the de-evolution of our protagonist mia and like what she goes through um Mm -hmm you know, again, like Brian mentioned, like the elevated horror of it all. And like, yes, this is another movie that centers around like grief as, as the primary trauma that's like moving us forward. But like, it just does it in a way that doesn't feel tired and boring. And like, are we've already seen that been there, done that it's just really inventive and all practical. And, um, 
I, yeah, I'm, I was, I'm obsessed with this movie. And I think I broke Brian's hand while watching it. <laughs> yeah. I understood what it was like to shake the hand. Oh God. <laughs> um, yeah. I, was very scared. I, I just like, didn't know what was going to happen. And like, I just squeezed the shit out of his hand for the whole movie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this was a butt clencher for me. Oh, I had yeah. a great time. We also saw it early. So mm -hmm. we did not get the same amount of hype that people potentially saw it a couple weeks after us and whatnot because That's we fair. went in didn't know what to expect um was hoping it was good but didn't know if it was actually good we know that a lot of money was paid by a24 to be able to distribute it but like mm -hmm. um i i just was like it was a unique well-made well-executed horror movie with some great scares some images i'll never forget as well um mm -hmm. And I just think that this was above and beyond anything else that was potentially made this year from a creative standpoint, from an execution standpoint. Um, uh, I thought that, you know, things that I usually hate in horror movies, um, we talked about it in the episode with like hitting an animal on the way to your thing. And then that just setting a tone. I'm glad the kangaroo kind of came back into play in mm -hmm. this movie. Um I thought the ambiguity of the end, I, I love yeah. the ambiguity of, of what happened at the end turned into, you know, exactly what happened at the end with that final kind of like reveal, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I just think, I thought the performances, especially um, the lead performance in this was just stunning um, and very memorable. Um, I, I, uh, I I was just very into this movie from beginning to end. And, and I recognize that, you know, Nikisha, it's pretty low on your, it's still in your top 10, but it's lower yeah. on your top 10. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear why it's there and maybe not higher or I, I don't know. Yeah, no, I think that I got caught up in the overhype when mm -hmm. I saw it. So as, as much as I enjoyed it and I love that it is a fresh concept, um, I was expecting it to be the scariest thing that I was going to see this season. Mm. And it wasn't that. It was still excellent, but as far as like pissing my pants, you know, hereditary level for me, um, scary, it was not that. Sure. Uh, so I think that's why it just fell off uh, a little bit for it. To but clarify, I did mm -hmm. not piss my pants. Okay. <laughs> just wanted everyone to know. You just broke Brian's hand, but yeah. piss, no. Right. You did not okay. anticipate and talk. <laughs> <laughs> and talk to me. <laughs> that's so good. That's uh, oh, that's yes. so good. All right. <laughs> but no, I, I really loved it. And I agree, Brian. I think the performances were absolutely fantastic. It's people, essentially no name people, right, who carried this movie so well. Um, and I thought that it was just a good uh, ensemble cast. Um, I liked the practical effects. I loved the ending, um, the reveal of the ending. And uh, I thought it was just very smart. Um, but yeah, j just because it wasn't like scary, scary to me is mm -hmm. a, little, a little lower on my list. But that's all. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's just, just for clarity's sake, let's just read our top tens. Um, I'll go first. 10 is Influencer, 9 is When Evil Lurks, 8 is Birth Rebirth, 7 is Scream 6, 6 is Totally Killer, 5 is Thanksgiving, 4 is Your Girl and Mine, Megan, 3 is Wissara, The Bone Woman, 2 is Evil Dead Rise, and 1 is Talk to Me. Nice. Um, Nikisha, you want to read just yours, 10? Yeah. Okay. My 10, When Evil Lurks, 9, The Blackening, 8, Scream 6, 7, Talk to Me, 6, The Conference, 5, Saw 10, 4, Thanksgiving, 3, Evil Dead Rise, 2, Totally Killer, and number one, Megan. And Jamie? Ooh. My list is number 10, Sick, number 9, Hell House Origins, number 8, Totally Killer, Number seven, Infinity Pool. Number six, The Offering. Number five, Thanksgiving. Number four, Saw 10. Number three, Megan. Number two, Evil Dead Rise. And number one, Talk to Me. Yes. Excellent. All right. So now let's go to the flip side of this. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we're just going to read through our most disappointing. Not, not, not necessarily the worst movies you've seen this year, but the most disappointing. <laughs> um, Do uh, order? No, it doesn't matter. Right. Um, uh, Jamie, do you want to go first? Sure. Just read all of them. Yeah. Cool. So my most disappointing, I have the Outwaters, hmm. the Boogeyman, Cobweb, hmm. <laughs> Malum, mm -hmm. and Five Nights at Freddy's. Sure. I mean, yeah. Solid list. Can I ask what was what what disappointed you about Cobweb? Um, I I really didn't like that movie. Um, mm. I just I feel like well, I felt like the the third act was like totally different from the rest of the movie. Fair. And I'm trying to remember if I if like which parts I, I enjoyed more versus not. It just like at that point, I feel like the movie went off the rails and I was like, I think I was over it before. I kind of wish that it had, it had gone off the rails maybe a little bit sooner, but like it just mm. felt like there was so much buildup. Um, I feel like the scariest thing in the movie was the kid's nightmare, but that had nothing to do with anything else in the movie. And then nothing yeah. else in the movie scared me. Um, and again, I just get very annoyed when I feel like things can be resolved when people communicate effectively with one another. And like this just felt like if the parents had communicated better with their son, then they would We wouldn't have, have any yeah, this issue. <laughs> I get it. Also also with Cobweb, I I think everyone's like, oh, everyone loved Lizzie Kaplan's performance. I did not. Really? I thought, yeah, yeah, I thought she was super weird. Okay. I thought yeah, the parents yeah. were super weird. I like I have, didn't understand like how I yeah, like there was something about the way and sorry, let me to cut you off, Brian. But like it just I it felt like I was like, what time period are we in? The way that they're acting is just like not now. And mm. like, yes, there's this like reveal about like you know, why they might be acting the way that they are because of what happened with their previous child. But like the way that they are currently acting does not justify their behaviors from the past. It just doesn't make sense. It just made me feel like, why are they stuck in like some weird, like in like the eighties or maybe the fifties? I don't even know, but it was just <laughs> super weird to me and like, didn't make sense. And at that point I was like, why aren't they homeschooling this kid? The way that they're acting, That's they don't why. want him to like be exposed to the outside world. That's why. But they are mm -hmm. bringing him into the outside world. So mm -hmm. like, there's just like a huge disconnect with how yes. they are treating him like very insular and isolated in the house. But like, he's he's going off and like still learning things and exposed to things. And so like, there's just this weird tension that did not make sense for me. I agree. I think it did not make, I think screenplay wise, it did not make sense that he was still going out into the world and coming back to like his Amish seeming parents. Like, you know, like <laughs> it, like not that they were Amish. I'm just saying like, no, it yeah, just yeah. felt like this, the, this kid is not the person that these two people would have raised. It yeah. just did not make sense to me at all. They and didn't I seem thought, like an actual family. There, it was no. like very weird. Yeah. And it did not, it felt like acting. Lizzie Kaplan felt like she was acting. It did not feel like a normal, like natural kind of like this person has gone through trauma. Is trying. It felt like I'm putting on a weird affectation because like I want to do something different. And, and that just didn't work for me. And I was just waiting for like the shoe to drop that like he was adopted or stolen, and the fact, and then, and then honestly, I was more surprised by the fact that he was actually their kid than like the whole other thing. And I, I have another list where I'll get into my other cobweb issue. Um, yeah. Um. But yeah, I totally agree with the cobwebery of that. <laughs> of that movie. Cobwebery. Okay. Uh, but I'll I'll hold off giving other critiques if other people have maybe similar feelings about um, their disappointing list. Uh, I'll go with mine. Yeah. Um, 
So I want to do some honorable mentions or disappointed first. Um, I'm dead. Uh, I mean, I if that think... was the case, like, <laughs> let me pull out my leather box. Yeah. Right. Um, I thought that Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey <laughs> didn't lean I into forgot. it. was awful. It was. It's my least favorite horror movie of the year, but it just did not lean into. It was poorly acted. The plot was stupid. I don't think the kills were cool enough for a movie like this. This is mm. a low budget garbage film that needed to lean into it being low budget and garbage and it yeah. did it um so that was disappointing um uh uh and so so i i want to do that one i also wanted to say that we saw exorcist believer believer about justin bieber um, yeah. and it was it wasn't disappointing to me because it was bad and everyone told us it was going to be bad but I don't think it was as bad as people say it was. It had some, if it was not an exorcist movie from that franchise and you cut all of the like mentions to exorcist, I think it's a significantly better movie than it. the branding of that movie brings that movie down. Okay. Um, and uh, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is my, I, I have to tell you, I, for as much as I love Mike Flanagan, I I I literally forgot Fall the House. Fall the House of Usher made no dent on me this year, the way that his other movies, TV shows have. Really? I I, I think that it was. That's a hot take. I think that it was hot take alert. (laughs) Yeah, we are. I still think it was. It's weird because I still liked it, but it's disappointing in his canon. Okay. Wow. And okay. I, I still think it's better than half of the movies that I saw, more than half of the movies I saw this year. But when it mm-hmm. comes to his canon of TV shows, I think that it was, it was, it was fine. And I, I think that moments are memorable, but overall I was like, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like he like, he just like, it was a lot of the same themes and stuff that I would seen him kind of do a little bit before. I don't know. I, I I disappoint. I don't know. It was just like, I don't know. It was predictable. It was and, yeah. and yeah. Um, but here are my most disappointing. She came from the woods. Uh, mm. I love a good like eighties camp sleep boy camp movie. This one just like, didn't know what it wanted to be. And I was just really bummed by that. Uh, knock at the cabin. I was really hoping that M night Shyamalan directing a, a story that he didn't come up with was going to be much better than it actually was. <clears throat> um uh VHS 85 I, I just wanted the I just want listen I know they're inconsistent. They've always these these segments have always been inconsistent in every single one. I, I just if one of these had been a little bit better, I think I would have enjoyed it a little bit more. Um like Jamie said the Outwaters a really good first 20 minutes for an avant-garde found footage film. And then it just descends into unwatchability for me. Um, And then my number one, most disappointing movie this year was Malum. Um, Mm. It was on so many, I love this movie lists and Mm. honestly just watch last shift. The last shift is so much better. So much Mm. better. And, and maybe, and maybe we watch them too close together. Maybe. Mm-hmm. But like Malum gave it like several months. Yeah, Malum was a bummer. Yeah, that's disappointing. Well, because uh, I did see Malum on other people's like uh, lists on social media, but I remember you guys saying how much you didn't, <laughs> how much yeah. you didn't like it. Yeah. So I'm just curious too, as if like if those people also saw Last Shift or not. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the Last question. Shift came out in, like what 2014. So like Something that was like, like that. that was like se- obviously several years, almost ten years since the like remake version of the same movie comes right, out. Right, so right. like maybe that was enough time for people. Maybe they like haven't revisited it in these nine years that passed. We right. saw it within the same year, so yeah. Like remembering the story <clears throat> and remembering the effects and things like that. But like honestly, like the lower budget version was just like way more effective way yeah. scarier yeah okay uh well for my 
top disappointing, five disappointing. I also had Knock at the Cabin as one of them mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, I agree. It was just, if I was enjoying my time and in, in trying to see where it was going to go, but then it felt like it just didn't go anywhere. <laughs> and yeah. then it just ended. Uh, so Knock at the Cabin, Influencer, for the reasons I already said, because it was yeah. just such a strong opening and it, for it to just fall flat was just very disappointing. Yeah. Um, Insidious, Red Door, sure. um, disappointing for me. And I also have um, Exorcist Believer because it's like a new time. Yes, it's exorcism, but I just felt like it could have been so much better. But I think to your point, Brian, like if you took it out of the chain of exorcist movies, like, okay, maybe, but because you have such um, a big following of like the exorcist mm -hmm. movies, um, I think that it just could have done so much better. Um, yeah. Also that and... ending was too convoluted. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I still don't I, really I, know what happened. Right, right. And I felt like, and I um, might have mentioned this too, when we were just briefly talking about it, like the actual exorcism doesn't like start until like super late in the movie. And then it's like maybe the last like 10 minutes or so and then it's done. Mm -hmm. It's like, I didn't need everything else that was building up to this, you know? And if you are going to keep building up to it, I needed more from a lot of different pieces. Um, yeah. In all of that buildup, I needed a little bit more understanding of. I think you needed to lean more into um, um, Leslie Odom Jr.'s backstory mm -hmm. and what he believes, what he doesn't believe. I, I just think there were there. You needed a lot more of that stuff. Um, I also think you needed more of the gruesome stuff uh, before the while she was being possessed like yes. Reagan in the original, like all that, like kind of crazy unwatchable stuff. You needed way more of that stuff in this one. Exactly. 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 Um, and then I don't know if you guys watched this, but it was in the top five of like the rotten tomatoes, but it was attachment. It's a Danish film. Oh, I didn't watch mm -hmm. it's on my list. So I didn't watch it. So Jamie, you were talking about a movie that, um, had to do with a, a, a dibbit or not, or just like the, the Jewish yeah. culture and exorcism in a way. Mm -hmm. And that's like kind of what attachment was. Mm -hmm. And it was another one for me that was like building to something, to something, to something, and then nothing happens and then it ends. And so I, one, I was looking at the comments too on um, Rotten Tomatoes about it. And someone was like, so there's, you know, a slow burn and then like, the slowest of slowest burns into <laughs> nothing and it was the latter and i agree it was just like okay when's something gonna happen when's something gonna happen what's going on what's going on but i just thought the idea was so cool too because i'm not attached to or know any information really about like jewish traditional like culture and principles and practices so it was really fun to get like an idea i hope that they did it justice i don't know but an idea of like um uh that type of culture and tradition um and so that's i i enjoyed that concept but then like it just didn't go anywhere so it's just like okay well hmm. maybe i just gained a little bit more knowledge about uh, these customs and culture but like as far as it being scary like this it's not yeah yeah, didn't totally. happen for me. So, let me if y'all watch it, let me know what you what you think. Yeah, definitely <laughs> of it. Um, but yeah, cool. Um, does anyone have any fun categories uh, before mm -hmm. we move into predictions and stuff? Yes, Jamie. Jamie, I do. Mm -hmm. I have two. Yeah. Um, one is uh, best song sung by director of movie. <laughs> oh, <Obsessed>. okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and that would be Stay in the credits of Insidious the Red Door, <laughs> sung by Patrick Wilson. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, the other I have is um, uh, Best Vespa. Uh huh. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, the Vespa? That, that award goes to, yeah, <laughs> the Best Vespa. <laughs> um, that award goes to the Pope's Exorcist. Yeah, great. Well, oh yes, my God. fantastic. I still haven't. I didn't watch that either. But it's oh, on Netflix. Man. Maybe I'll revisit. You should, yeah, that's yes. a good one. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just have my top three goriest. Yeah. Yeah. Of the of the season. Uh, coming in at three is Evil Dead Rise of Gore. Coming in at two is Cocaine Bear because wow, that whole scene. Did y'all have? Did y'all watch that movie? I did yeah, not. I did. I did. It's uh, <laughs> okay on my list. It twenty eight on my list. Yes, it's the scene where the ranger shoots at the door and ends yeah. up shooting. Oh my god! Yeah, I yeah. was laughing slash throwing up. It was disgusting in the best possible way yeah uh and then number one is evil uh when evil lurks because this because yeah. of the axe man yeah oh that was brutal yeah that was brutal for sure brutal 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 uh and the kids god and then how can you ever forget the kids like that's just mm-hmm. they they didn't send a chance yeah but that's all i have just my top three glorious um so in this one, I have a couple. One, images I won't forget from movies this year. Um, the final image from Talk to Me. Mm-hmm. Uh, secondary, the when uh, his eye scene when he's kill- when he's beating himself up, uh, when he gets yes. too possessed. <clears throat> um, the dog scene from When Evil Lurks. The uh, Russell Crowe on a Vespa. I also had had him, <laughs> and then seared uh, into my eye, yeah. eye sockets. And then the cheese grater from Evil Dead Rise. <laughs> yeah. Um, then I have um, a list of kind of sort of horror. So these are my top five movies that are not really horror, but like maybe uh, five: <laughs> A Haunting in Venice, four: Saltburn, three: Sisu. Two oh, yeah. missing. Mm, uh, mm-hmm. Missing was great, and then one poor things. Oh, okay. Interesting. Did you like, have a good time watching Poor Things? Loved it. It's yes. one of my favorite All movies right. of the year. You loved it. Okay, Great time. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. I, I I call them horror ish or horror adjacent. It's you know Poor Fair. Things is a take on the Frankenstein you know mm-hmm. concept, but it's I, I, it's not horror per se, right? Um. And then missing has some horror elements to it, but I, I would call it more of like a, fa- a of like a, a thriller found footage uh, or like you know that kind of a thing. Um, Sisu is more of like a gory action movie, that type, like a revenge action movie and stuff like that. Um, and then we have my famous in my new category: movies that could have been better with one change. Okay. Ooh. Um, the first one I have is Cobweb. Mm-hmm. Cobweb is better if you use practical effects in the last th- uh, last part of that movie. The CGI, the CGI ruined that movie for me. More than mm, any yeah. performances or not believing anything like we just talked about. If the CGI in that last third of the movie is either better or it's practical effects mostly, that movie being unhinged and off the rails is completely justified. I thought that all of that stuff in the last part of that movie truly ruined that movie for me. Um, uh, The movie 65 with Adam Driver this year. If you don't spoil the twist in the trailer, the movie is way more fun. Listen, it's Mm -hmm. not a perfect movie. It's not going to be that much better. But if you go in not knowing what the heck is going to happen in this movie and all of a sudden the twist of the movie and the twist of why it's called that movie, the title then then you absolutely 100% um, that movie is way more enjoyable. Nice. Um, Renfield, if you recast Aquafina's character or at least have Aquafina and Nicholas Holt have more chemistry, that movie is better. I forgot that whole conversation. Yes. I think just take out the the like romantic element entirely. Exactly. Sure. You, yeah. It, it, that's fine too. Take out the romantic element too. And it, but you need to fix their relationship, either lean into the chemistry or just completely don't even mention it in the plot. <clears throat> Yeah, um, right. Because so I, I think you like it's it forces them to center on the relationship between Renfield and mm-hmm. Dracula instead right. of having any other. I don't care about any other relationship in that movie. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, and then uh, talk to me, even though it was my number one. If you re-edit that sequence where she's actually killing her dad and not mm. uh, the, the her mom or whatever it is mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. attacking her. To me, that, that scene is just is the 
most predictable. You know what's going to happen in that sequence. It feels very like this is what's supposed to happen at this point in the movie. Um, I, I think that would have had more emotional impact if you edit that scene differently. Um, ah. uh, and I think then I think it's even closer to a perfect movie. Um, but th- that those are my categories uh, for um, for that. Um, Yay! Cool. So. I want to read your predictions <laughs> from last year, uh, uh, and then I'm going to have you go through yours this year, and we'll, we'll see how well you did. Um, okay, now we're in the prediction section. Uh, Jamie, let's start with you. Uh, your prediction number one for 2023 was Stu will come back and we'll get a glimpse of Stu in Scream 6. Um, mm, how would you self-assess that? <laughs> I was I was wrong, but it's we did okay, kind of get Stu in Five Nights at Freddy's. So was I wrong? You got something. I'll also I'll give you a quarter of a point because Stu was on their murder board with yeah. a de- date of death or whatever it is. On he was. There. He was. Mark, yeah. So uh, yeah. Okay. So we're wrong, but you know, with an asterisk. Leaving it um, open. Yeah. Um, the next one you said is we'll have some sort of an announcement for a Friday the 13th or, um, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Wow. Did I say movie? I, I, <laughs> I believe you did because the, the Friday the 13th TV show had already been announced, mm. um, the Crystal Lake. And I think you said movie or something like that because I, uh, so that's, uh. That's uh, that's that's. But that's also that's... disappointing that that didn't happen. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> and then your third one was they're going to announce a new "The Hills Have Eyes" reboot. Mm, I don't think I was right about that. Either. No, I don't think so either. Um, but those were fun. Yeah. Uh, they were fun. <laughs> but uh, what about I this? Mean, year? Silent Hills coming mm. back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, so Jamie, what do you got for us this year? All right. So for this year, I have three new predictions. My first one is I think that Nev Campbell is going to return to the Scream franchise. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that the reason why she didn't come back for six was because they were not paying her what she was asking for. Um, Given all of the recent news about the upcoming next installment, my guess is that they are going to pay her what she is asking for so that they can keep this chain going. Um, Cause I really just don't see what they are going to do. Like mm. they're going to have to rework their whole thing. Um, so my, my prediction is that they bring her back so that they can continue to sustain this chain. My second prediction is more about box office. Um mm-hmm. And I predict that the new Ghostbusters movie is going to bomb at the box office. Oh, my God. That's one of mine, too. Wait, really? Really? I literally, <laughs> my third one was Ghostbusters is going to flop. Yeah. Okay. Great. So there's something in the air. Um, there's something in the air. And I don't even I don't even see anything about it, but I just have a feeling. like. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I think that, like, the the – the all female casted Ghostbusters did not do well because people hate women. Um, Say that so one more time. They, yes. Yeah, like a hundred percent. And that movie was great. Like I thought that movie was totally fine. I loved it. And then they <laughs> totally, they fully scrapped it, and they, you know, had to do like a nostalgic reboot again. And like it was just, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of over this chain at this point, and I just don't see how it continues to be compelling even with the throwing nostalgia directly in our faces so i just don't think that this movie is going to perform very well at all yeah maybe we can have a ghost break ghost busty break um just leave it be listen yeah. bustin doesn't always make us feel good <laughs> unfortunately so yeah very true um my third one is kind of more of like a loose one um, just based on like all the trends that, you know, we were talking about of seeing a lot more like pregnancy, child rearing related themes. I think that we're going to see 
more disturbing content that centers around like awful, disgusting things happening to kids. Mm. Like we see, we saw some of it, but like, I think it's going to continue to ramp up this next year. I feel like, you know, the, the shock of like, you know, seeing kids be murdered, possessed, all of that stuff. Like I think young people have it coming for them and we're going to keep seeing those, those themes like way more prevalently in upcoming horror. Fair. That is my, those are my predictions. Fantastic. Nice. Um, all right, Nikisha, you, these were, you, you had two last year. One mm-hmm. is scream six will bring down the tr- chain like Jason in Manhattan, it was going to be terrible. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And it was on my list. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to say that one was wrong. Very. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then your second one is my favorite. Uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey will be the most quotable 2023 movie. <laughs> I'm weak. And I didn't even see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 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 excited about my predictions right. for this for this lay, year. Lay, lay it on us. Okay, my first one. This is so out of nowhere, but I feel like Maxine and Scream Seven will not come out this year. Oh, mm. interesting. I feel like they will not come out this year. Yeah, that they will wait, especially Scream Seven, because of everything that is happening, and they have to rework it anyway. Mm-hmm. But I also feel like Maxine will still kind of. I mean, it's been TBA for like forever and i feel like they're gonna probably let some new stuff come in and then put it out for 2025 well is the casting Um, is the open casting call still open have you submitted maybe they're just waiting for you to submit your your tape there you go i'm gonna be in the movie that's why guys if you were in maxine that would be the greatest (laughs) thing of all time yeah truly you would have ascended to a level that like just would make me so happy forever Yes, thank you. Me too. Just ascending, <laughs> like skipping all the steps, just jumping straight into, you know. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> My second one is about Jordan Peele's like surprise Christmas movie that nobody knows about. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's going to either be about witches or vampires. Ooh. So it was already pushed to 2025. Oh, okay. So, I didn't see that. But no, that's okay. I'm, I, I'm, I still witches or vampires okay yeah great. hopefully we'll get a trailer of sorts and to know like at least what it could be about so yeah, a name my could perhaps be. a name something past i just feel like with the vibe of jordan and like the things that he has done and the things that he says that he's interested in i don't know you know i feel like he could take on some elevatedness of like witches or vampires um, and then my third one was what Jamie said. Literally, Ghostbusters is going to flop this year. So Flop, flop. <laughs> okay. Flop, flop. Clop, clop. Love it. All right. Mine from last year were um, The Exorcist Believer is going to be great. And it's and, when and uh, David Gordon Green is going to like have a resurgence after his last two Halloween movies. Um, Damn. That was wrong. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Not only... Not only did it flop and, you know, um, it also is, uh, um, he's not even going to direct the next one and they're rethinking it. So there's that. My next one was the Haunted Mansion movie is going to be really good and it's going to bring back like the ride to movie, uh, you know, um, trend. Um, Brian, how do you feel about that movie? I, I hated it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so Obsessed. that was wrong. And then, um, I said that the last of us is going to be the new game of Thrones, like water cooler TV show. Um, and that video mm. game sales are going to skyrocket because of it. Um, right. yeah. I, 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 I think that, was, I don't know if that's a hundred percent correct. Um, I'm sure video game sales. I mean, that went Bill up. and Frank episode. I think yeah, you're that's 100% true. Correct. Everyone okay. was talking about it. Sure. Yes. I'll, and I'll I do give think you're right about credit. video game sales because, at least on the pulse that I have on Twitch, everyone was playing those games when that show came out. Okay. Like every nice. streamer 
It was it, whether they played it before or they were new to it, they were playing both of them. Great. So cool. I'll take that. I'm gonna give you all the um, points. Thank you. One. So um my predictions for this year, uh Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey Two is going to be leaps and bounds better than the first one. And they're going to figure it out and like lean into the camp more. Okay. Fair. Interesting. Maybe I'm just That's projecting. Hopeful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I did not choose Ghostbusters as the flop of the year. I chose Beetlejuice 2 as the flop. Mm. I think that it's going to be a dud creatively and box office wise. I don't yeah. know. People love Jenna Ortega, and I do think she chooses some pretty good projects. Yeah, I mean, I'm going out on a limb. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I hope I'm wrong. Uh, I hope you're wrong, too. Um, And I said that Scream 7 is going to be postponed indefinitely, Ooh. and that... Um, Spyglass is going to sell it because they really screwed themselves and that A24 who's looking for a franchise to buy is going to buy Scream and fast track the first movie because A24 wanted the Halloween franchise and they lost it because Mm. A24 needs franchises (laughs) to Mm. justify the cost of all the other movies that they you know they're doing so Mm -hmm. that that's I'm going out on a crazy limb there um, but that's uh, that's that's my prediction there. Has A24 franchised anything other than Talk to Me? No. Really? Like they they haven't franchised anything. Like like they they like you know make all the David Edgar's movies and stuff like the Robert Edgar. Yeah, movies but like uh, no, I but mean like a sp- like one specific. No, thing. no. The, Talk to Me will be their first. Wow. I'm pretty sure. Um. So yeah, they they mm-hmm. so I think that's uh. That's my, that's my, those are my predictions. Um, nice. Now, I want to get into our most anticipated for 2024. Mm-hmm. Um, but first, I want to read uh, everyone's most anticipated from last year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nikisha, let's start with you. Okay. Uh, at number five last year, you had Saw X. Woo-woo. I think that paid off for you. <laughs> It did. <laughs> At number four, you had Insidious, The Red Door. Damn. Mm-hmm. I don't think that paid off for you. No. At number three, you had Scream 6. Yeah. Um, uh, at number two, you had Your Girl and Mine, uh, Mithrigan. Yes. And at number one, you had Maxine. <laughs> Damn. Which again, it's just going to be postponed. Yeah, forever. yeah. It's fine. Uh-huh. It's fine. <laughs> um, Jamie, at number five, you had Knock at the Cabin. Oof. <laughs> at number four, you had Scream Six, which I forgot about. Yep. So, doing so well. yeah. doing well. At number three, you had Evil Dead Rise. Mm-hmm. At number two, you had Renfield. And number one, you had your girl and mine, Mithrigan, Megan. Thank you. Um, mine was five, Megan, four, Insidious, The Red Door, three, Scream, six, two, Evil Dead Rise. And the reason why it was a disappointment to me is number, my number one most anticipated thing of last year was going to be Fall of the House of Usher. Mm. Mm. And I just... Also, it just... unrelated, I did some digging into A24 and they did do all of Ty West's trilogy, so I don't know. If... Oh, that that that's a good point. Like, I mean, we, we know it's ending. In theory, it's ending after Maxine. I have no yeah. idea it's going to come after that. But like, but that's still, the only it's one. A, oh, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, Work. Well, with that being said, who wants to go first with their most anticipated of twenty twenty four? I'll go. Oh, Whoa. go ahead, Jamie. <laughs> Jamie, We're just go for both it. Both ready and raring. Um, yeah. These aren't in any particular order. Um, so I'm just going to say them all. Uh, so my top five that I have are <laughs> I feel like I'm already shooting myself in the foot based on what you just reported back to me um, Trap, the upcoming M. Night Shyamalan movie. 
It takes place at a concert. And I just think that's a really interesting setting for a horror movie. It, like For sure. You know, like just the stress about like being in a really crowded space. Um, you know, the stress of like, like the risk of crowd crush. There's so many things that I think about of like what could go wrong in the concert that mm-hmm. I'm hopeful that this is a good movie. <laughs> so that's, that Love. was my reasoning behind that. Yes. Yes. Um, another one that I have anticipated is Alien Romulus. Um, it's a good one. Because it's directed by Fede Alvarez. And, um, you know, as we know, he did The Evil Dead, um, mm-hmm. like first uh, remake uh, that had come out. Um, and he just makes a, a quite a gory, gross film. So I'm hopeful that it's going to be like a pretty disgusting entry into the alien chain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. I have Maxine on here because I'm just hoping it comes out this year. Maybe I'll have it for every year. Um, right. It comes yeah. Out. <laughs> um, I'm guessing that this is also on Brian's list, but I have Lisa Frankenstein because mm-hmm. um, uh, Diablo Cody and um, just really, I mean, Frankenstein's really having its moment like yes, yeah, this, right? uh, this, this is year crazy. And, and next year. So like, Really excited to to keep uh, you know tapping into the universal monsters, um, and then my last one I have that I'm really excited for is Nosferatu by Robert nice. Eggers. I just uh, I, like really enchanted by his direction, so I'm really excited for whatever wildness is gonna come in that movie. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Nikisha, what are your top nice. five? Uh, Lisa Frankenstein is also on my list because I finally mm-hmm. saw like a trailer of it. I'm like, oh, this <clears throat> looks interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, a Quiet Place Day One. Um, mm. I'm excited to see that. And also shooting myself in the foot, but Beetlejuice 2, purely for the nostalgia, <laughs> but I'm going to watch it. Like, I'm going to give them my money. You know, mm-hmm. I'm going to go see it. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to hope that it's good. Uh, the Strangers. Oh, yeah. Chapter One. Because I think they're getting like a full trilogy all next yep. year. Yeah, uh, which is exciting. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, I don't know, I guess I'm just super into dolls and toys and stuff that are possessed <laughs> because imaginary. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I had that on my list originally. Yeah. Um, cool. Mine are Beetlejuice 2. Mm. Uh, Lee Winnell's uh, The Wolfman. Mm. Oh, starring Christopher Abbott comes out next year. I'm really or this year. I'm really excited for that. Lisa Frankenstein, Maxine, and the m- number one movie I'm most excited for next year is Nosferatu. Yeah, that, that I'm, I'm. I cannot wait for that. And I think that I mean, and Jordan Peele moved his movie. They were supposed to come out on the same day. But uh, he joined. They moved it to next year, uh, twenty twenty five. Um, wow. But yeah, um, uh, a couple. Uh, a, I just want to do a couple things before we we go here. Mm-hmm. The first thing is, I just thought it was interesting. The top five highest grossing horror movies of the year mm. uh, are Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, these are these are I'm I'm listing them domestic, but yes. they're also these these five I'm reading out in domestic order, but worldwide these I think these are also the still the top five in a different order. Um uh Five Nights at Freddy's is number one regardless, then Scream Six, then Megan, then The Nun Two, and uh Insidious the Red Door. Those are the top five highest grossing horror movies of the year. I mean, yeah, they all have a following, so it's like that makes sense. Yeah, I, to be honest, be surprising because the Nun is not a good movie, and probably one of the weaker like additions in the entire Conjuring universe. Um, even though I do think that the Nun two is better than the first Nun, but like, yeah. still, I'm surprised so many people went to see it. Yeah. I think it had a good trailer though. Mm. It did. Also, it's PG-13, whereas it was up against Saw X and Exorcist Believer, which are both uh, 
R. So that may it's have just helped. Just believer it. was R. I believe so. Yeah. Really? Um. And uh, the 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 most impressive one on that list is Megan because it it just it really made that money from the the silliness and the trailers and the yeah. general stuff. Um, wow. I thought that was cool. interesting. However, what I did was of all of the episodes we put out this year, I figured out which ones we all gave nines and tens when it came to shakes on our four S's. Mm -hmm. So it, I just thought this was interesting. Mm -hmm. Jamie, you gave nines to Midsommar, Army of Darkness. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Amazing. And you I... gave out three tens. The Last of Us season one, mm -hmm. Evil Dead and Evil Dead two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna get blamed. <laughs> Nikisha, yes. you gave out a couple of nines, mm. four I believe. Midsummer, Scream six, The Last of Us season one, and The Descent. Oh yeah, mm. Descent is fantastic. Um. And then uh, the tens you gave out this year were Megan yes. and the Invisible Man. Oh, yeah. Um, that tracks. So I gave out way more <laughs> nines <laughs> and tens. Uh, nine for me was The Last of Us Season 1. The Invisible Man. The Autopsy of Jane Doe. The original Exorcist and Hell House LLC. Nice. The tens for me were I Saw the Devil, The Sixth Sense, Midsommar, The Orphanage, and Wreck. Hmm. Okay. And we all give out a lot of eights, so I, I only only went through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, that sounds right. Yeah, that's our that's our recap of 2023 yes a good, year. a good year it's a good year for horror i'm excited even more about next year i feel like there's always going to be some movie that comes out of nowhere and we're all going to love it and obsess over it so totally um i'm excited to see what the horror movie brings to us this year so thank you guys for listening to us uh, you can follow us on all of our social medias instagram twitter tiktok and YouTube at Talk Horror Pod. And Brian, where can they listen to us? You can listen to us wherever you get podcasts. So, uh, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Uh, hey. You can find us on Spotify and, of course, Apple Podcasts. Rate and review us there. Five stars, please. And thank you. Thank you. Um, so, I have a quote from Birth Rebirth. Ooh. Uh, don't you walk away from me, you mad scientist princess bitch. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Excellent. I like it. I like it. <laughs> well, thanks for rocking with us, guys, for all of 2023. We'll see you in the next season. Happy Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.